Oh my god. Hey up everybody. Jesus Christ, I I I I don't know if it's because I've been gone for too long or if y'all are just feral today, but there's so many. Hello. Um chair, thank you for redeeming first and I saw I think you're used to be weeder maker, eh? Congratulations on your final form. Bird nerd, glad to hear that you do indeed have skin. Hello, Froggy. Hey Crumps, how you doing? Chaos, Addison Stigma, Magpie, how are you guys doing today? Father Crow, Zoro, Gay Froggy, Clover, hello, hello, hello. The bears are indeed doing coke. Does anyone want noodles? I would be so down. And greetings to Froggy Frog and Foxtrot. Thanks for the first time, chatters. Uh, Crystal, hello. Zaylin, hello. Grim, it's been forever. Oh my god, hello. Hi, <laughs> Xander, back from the dead. Do you remember me? Uh, possibly. If you're who I think you are, then yes, I do remember you, but I'm not entirely sure. Is it the same name, or is this a different name? Because I, I remember not being able to, pr to, to pronounce that, but it's kind of like it's Caitlyn, but it's not actually that. We miss you all. Oh, we are feral. Hello. Hey, up. Same name. Okay. All right. I remember not being able to pronounce that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, I, I remember that name. I don't, I don't, I don't why, why the new follow? Father B, if I make ghost be themed cut off cuff covers for my farm crutches, would you like the... Yes, that's such a cool idea. I would, I would, I would be like a million times down. Oh, I gotta fucking remember to goddamn, I fucking pull up my face. Jesus Christ, it's already been a day today. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Oma Sander, and welcome home. There's so much happening right now. Hello to the dog that floats by whenever I start stream. Hi, guys. Um, I, I feel. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. I've been gone. I'm so sorry. I'd like to apologize for having being gone and making like absolutely zero content since the subathon. I I had to stop being a person. I had to step away from existing. Your hair it's beautiful. Thank you. It's it's freshly showered today, so it's a little bouncy today. Um but yeah, this is just this is what my hair does if I shower in the morning. Um, the days that you guys see my hair really flat and brushed out means I either showered at night and I have to brush my hair when I wake up in the morning and it flattens it, uh, or I didn't shower that morning and I showered the day before. I'm gonna be wire wrapping a really pretty jade for my friends. That's so cool. I, I, I wish you luck. Wire wrapping is a skill I do not have, but I admire quite highly. I have some wire wrapped, uh, like gems that I found myself, but yeah, um, I have exciting news before we even get into anything. I have exciting news for you that may or may not matter to some of you guys. But theoretically, if you were here for the subathon, it's exciting for you. And so I, I, I am happy to present the subathon merch, which is now available to purchase, uh, including this, which is Emily's design third place, which was the split B design, which is now available on a mason jars. We have Internet Husband's Sunny Bee design, which is available on tank tops, as I discussed with uh, Internet Husband. Uh, that one is now available in multiple different colors, white, yellow, black, gray, whatever you prefer. And then, of course, our first place designed by Flapjack, I Survived Piss Pants 2023. This is a full-size uh, wall flag, is what this ended up being. This is... <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's, it, it is a, it is a full-size flag. Uh, so imagine a pride flag. But it's just I survived piss pants 2023. So, the 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 pride the piss pants flag is now available. We also have this, which is a sticker sheet. That way you can get stickers for all three of them all at once. Um, because if I put them separately, it would have ended up being like twenty dollars to buy all three of them. And so instead, I have them all in one. So exclamation point merch will always take you back there. Um, all of those are avail available now until I decide that they're not available, which means likely. Uh, probably like a month. So if you want them, grab them. Uh, they're now available along with the limited time uh, OG merch, which is selling out. 
Um, I believe there's only three hoodies left. If anybody wants the OG hoodies, there are only three of these left from what I understand. Oh, four left. Sorry, there are four of these left. Um, once they're gone, they're gone forever and they're not coming back. So if you ever want one of those, grab them. Same thing with anything that says OG. So the shirt, the mug, and the stickers, those are all also going to be gone. Uh, once they're gone, they're gone forever. Good luck with that one. So that way when I'm famous, you can show off. <laughs> but yeah, so you guys can now access those if you guys are interested in it. I, I am very glad to have those up. Um, I scaled them up so the image quality is really, really good. I did some Photoshop on uh, internets to get rid of the grid behind it. So it's a flat, nice image that doesn't have anything around it. Um, and to everybody who, who submitted art, you guys are all super fucking cool, and I'm absolutely gonna do this again on the next subathon. I think we might make this like a little thing, and I think it's super fun and super exciting, um, because I have, like, dead ass one of the most creative and amazing communities I have literally ever seen. If you guys literally just scroll through the fan art channel on my Discord, I mean, the art that is made by this community is so, so incredibly insane and incredibly, like, impressive. And a reminder to anybody who gets all any of those pieces of merch that I, I have up now, those new ones, those were all made on Microsoft Paint or worse. Um, that was the, the challenge. So all, all of those designs were designed on, like, essentially the level of Microsoft Paint. They are fucking amazing at everything that they do. So shout out to all of my artists and all of my friends and all of the people that I love. You guys are insane. If I wasn't completely and totally without money due to getting all the big boy juices for a good amount of time right before my insurance runs out, I absolutely would. I totally understand. And don't ever feel pressured to buy merch. Don't ever feel pressured to donate or sub. You guys know that being here, being on streams, being part of the community, that is what matters to me. I have a job that pays my bills right now, which means that you guys are just meant to be here to be part of the community. So, that's amazing. Also, I love your voice, my guy. Thank you, Phoenix. That's very kind. Were you just, were you one of the new chatters I saw pop in? Weird kiddo, I don't have skin, I am a walking piece of meat and bones. That is valid for you, and I'm glad. I had to pause to sip. Did that say soup? No, this is this is not soup, this is coffee. This is this is this is just a this is just a mug of coffee. Dark Red, hello, I missed these streams, and we missed having you. Hello. It's so good to see everybody. So I'm glad to have everybody in and floating around. Well, there's an argument. They're the same. Okay, well, what's in the mug today? <laughs> it's a straw. <laughs> Did you get a straw to stir your coffee and then drink out of the mug? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, I used the straw to stir my coffee. Coffee in the afternoon? It's, oh, it's only 7.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m. is the right time to have coffee. You, Zaylin, you, you must be not uh, acquainted to my streams. I have never streamed without a coffee. I'm gonna be so, I'm so honest with you. I don't think you could, you could find a stream where I have not had a coffee hot or cold in my hands. Y'all need to get you some Stroopwafels. I would love some Stroopwafels. At least it isn't a knife this time. I do still have the coffee knife if we need it. <laughs> Does it ship to Europe? Yes, as far as I, I know, it does ship to Europe, because this is coming straight from Streamlabs. I believe Streamlabs does ship through to Europe. Um, so, it, I, it should be, I think the, um, what do you call it? The shipping may be more expensive. I'm not entirely sure, um, because I'm not in charge of the shipping prices, but Streamlabs is one of those things. I want to get it because you will get big. Bet your fucking ass I will. Absolutely. fucking lutely I'm not doing any more of this self-negative talk shit anymore. I'm so tired of that. I'd say because I recently had therapy this week and I'm in one of the good moods. Give it time, I'll get back to it. But fuck yeah, I'm gonna get big and we're gonna do this until it works, motherfuckers, because this shit's what makes me happy. I like fucking streaming. I like YouTube and I like you guys. My new wrist brace is blue and black, which gives ghost bee vibes. Yes, I might paint my ring split on oh, my ring splints. Oh my god, I'm legit making all my mobility aids ghost bee themed. Strawberry, you have to send me images of all of them, please. I, I need to see. I, I will I will send you stickers so that you can add them. It's not even a butter knife, it's a steak knife. It is indeed a steak knife. I would like the coffee, please. Oh no. Oh god. Why do I love and adore the idea? Maybe do the same with my mobility aids? Man, one of these days. Did you guys know I, I have a mobility aid now? I don't I haven't 
I haven't used it yet. I, I don't I don't know if I ever showed it on stream, but I do have one just in case. Um, because my knees get really, really bad. But I have Look, I have I have This is so goofy. I have my my first baby's first cane. It was a gift from a friend. Um and I am too afraid to use it in public yet, so I haven't. <laughs> But I, I have it uh, if I need it, and I just, and it's, 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 it's like, it's collapsible. It's one of those little hurricanes, so it's collapsible. So like, I can like put it in my backpack and take it with me. Um, but I'm gonna wait for the summer, and I'm gonna maybe possibly bring it with me places, and then if I need it, I might maybe get the courage to use it. We'll see. I promise nothing. But it's something I'm kind of sort of working on, but like it's it makes me spooked because I don't know, man. I I I don't want to be looked at and being like mm, he clearly doesn't need a cane. Why the fuck is he have a cane? And it's like I um having invisible illnesses is scary. Your cane is the same brand as mine, twins. We're twinsies, we're twinning. I love this for us. But yeah, no, it's it's like it's such a cool it's such a cool little thing. I love I love the Halo shirt. Thanks. This was a, this was a gift from this is a gift from roommate. I've never I've never worn it on stream before. Um, it says good at making extremely hot girls come. So thanks roommate for the gift. It was it was one of my Christmas presents. <laughs> so, <laughs> like Christmas presents are an incredibly important time in our year. I didn't know it fucking said that. Yeah, yeah, that's that is that is what it says. I like I like my shirt quite a lot. That is a sleigh shirt. Yeah, I like I like this. It's yeah, and so it spe it spells out gamer. See, good wait good at making extremely hot girls come gamer. <laughs> I'm a fucking gamer. I. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah no anyways that's that's a thing we love roommate in this house we stand roommate in this house which guys you guys are gonna have to help me decide something okay i'm gonna i'm gonna need help with a decision thing this is this is incredibly important this is a, an incredibly important decision okay i have as of now i don't know if that's gonna focus because my camera doesn't like to focus sometimes if you see i have 93 days now until i have to move out I have to move, so thank you for the happy. <laughs> what do we call roommate when roommate's no longer roommate? Do we just keep calling her roomie? I feel like I don't know what to, I, what I would change her name to. What else am I gonna call her? Cause you don't, you guys don't get to know her name. She, she stays in invisible secret. Room not, <gasps> room not. <laughs> Ash, hey Jingles. Oh, there you go. Thanks, welcome in. Her, <laughs> just call her her. <laughs> I like Ru We call them Bestie? Oh my god, we could we could call her Bestie. Room Not is a really funny She who must not be na That's the one. I know damn well she would fucking love that. That's it, that's the one the one lady I lived with. <laughs> call her Grand Grand, like the cursed one. <laughs> I'll propose these names to her. We'll, we'll propose these names. I think she's either gonna like the cursed one or she who must not be named the old tenant. <laughs> Ooh, half blue, half green hair. That sounds fantastic. Why am I wrong with my hands today? Oh my God. I saw a Garfield shirt that said, yeah, I'm a gamer and it said where my wife left me. <laughs> Make it sound like she's dead. Yeah, our, our dearly beloved queen of darkness. She's more of like, I like cursed one. I we I mean we used to refer to her as the group hallucination. Like so like I could very well just continue to refer to her as the group to <laughs> Darkness Dementia Ravenway. Yeah, Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, that's her name. But yeah, no, I <laughs> we used to refer to her as the group hallucination. I got nothing, but I don't think I need to offer anything. Your chat has it handled. My chat's always got cracked ideas. Oh god. Why are my hands hurting today? Me when I forget my ring splints. Yeah, I I love the concept of ring splints. I've seen them and I've never managed to like get them. The one who got away. I'm gonna start calling her the one who got away. 
Yeah, because my, my fingers do the, the things that your, your fingers aren't supposed to do, like when you like, you know, normal people, if you take if you take your two fingers and you do the uwu thing, right? Normal people's fingers will like do this, right? Like you kind of like tap your fingers together. And mine just kind of, they just kind of do, do this instead. And I just, it, uh, yeah, anyways, bendy fingies. So, I don't know, my fingers just don't like to be normal fingers, I suppose. But I've just kind of accepted it. The only time it really comes problematic is if, like, I'm writing. Because, like, if I write, like, if I'm holding a... I don't have a pencil. I'm gonna use this steak knife as a pencil. Like, if I'm writing, like, it does that. And I really don't think it's supposed to do that. So that, like, when I write, like, it's just like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. And it, I know it looks like I'm pressing down hard. And I'm really not. Like, it, like... I'm not, I'm not really using any pressure. Like, if I was pressing down, like, it would, like, like move. But, like, I'm not using really any pressure to, like... Boop. It just kind of... I'm, I, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not using any pressure right here. Hi, like, Andy, smile. Hello, Ali. Hi, thank you for the summary subscription. Oh my god, 18 months, queen. Thank you, love. How are you? Why write with a knife? Is that why it hurts? Hi, Tango. Hello. Yes, VIP Tango. Very true, very true. I'm incapable of using chopsticks. Chopsticks aren't too hard for me anymore. I love you. I love you too. I hope you're doing well. We've just literally just been sitting and chotting. Chotting? We're sitting in Charlton now. The fuck? I'm sorry, I can't talk today. Um, so, <laughs> the best way to write with knives. Yeah, the way it's been shot. Dude, I can't. Please, please, I'm begging. Hello, Xander, how are you doing? I'm good, Rainy. How are you doing? Carving. Oh, God, please. I can't. I can't. Also, I don't. I'm not going to use it right now because I'm drinking coffee and it would taste horrible. But my friend got me this, which is Warhead's, like, watermelon spray. It fucking slaps. It's so good, genuinely. It's kind of weird, but it's really good. She also got me, she also got me this. Hang on now. It is candy blocks. It's like Legos, but edible. If you're one of the autistics like me that wants to put fucking shit in their mouth all the time, it's Legos, but you can put them in your mouths and eat them. Mouths? How many do you have? I'm not, I don't need to know actually. But like, I haven't tried them yet, so I don't know if there are any, do you want me to try one? Let's try one. Let's try one on stream. This is gonna be a live reaction. Live rat, rat, react, live rat, I'm reacting. You can make ring splints with like 14, oh yeah, I've seen the 14 gauge wire. I've seen those on uh, TikTok before. First of all, I don't know why it's sold in a milk carton. I, I just went to open the box and realized it's, it, this, this is a milk carton. Like, I'm, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm, I'm stimming so hard it hurts, I've been there. Okay, so two tests here. One, can I build with it? Two, does it taste like ass? Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna fight to get just like three of them out and see if they click together. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. We're gonna get some of these out. Oh, 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 that one's gone forever. I just dropped it and it's officially gone forever. Okay, so I've got a couple of them out now. IP, yep, so there's the IP for that. If you have the, if you've been whitelisted, you can join it like that. Um, just click, like, add that, like, uh, add the IP into your, like, uh, fucking server, like, join server or whatever, and then you'll have to have to switch, sl type slash join, that kind of thing. Um, if you haven't been whitelisted, just redeem the thing on stream and give me your name. Xander, how much coffee have you had? You're talking so fast and you're stammering. Um, I've actually, this is my first coffee for the day. The reason I am is because I'm so excited to be here and haven't been here in like, I, I haven't streamed in so long. I'm just, I'm literally just happy to be here. Okay, so, um, maybe actually the problem is that I haven't had any coffee nor have I had my ADHD medication today. So you're just getting raw and unfettered Zandy. Carton is because it's the company recycles. I've gotten them before. I love that. Okay, so here's a quick look. Here's a quick look at the Legos. All right, so these, don't mind my hand shaking. It's totally fine. So these are the Legos. So these are a couple of the different sizes and shapes. They do come in different sizes, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna put, we're gonna put some of them to next to each other and we're gonna try to connect them, okay? Okay, I'm gonna try to connect these. Oh my God. Oh, <gasps> they like, They like actually snap together like Legos, like really, really snap together. Holy shit. Like this isn't just like, oh, they kind of like sit next to each other. I mean like, they really, really snap together. That's impressive. 
I'm I'm genuinely impressed. I was expecting to like, oh yeah, they'll like fit together and they'll kind of like sl like sit, but like they click. Okay, okay. All right. Here's the real important test here. Do they taste like ass? Nice, nice. Here, don't don't look at my face. Don't look at my face. Don't look at my face. Look at the Lego. There we go. Nope, no, no, not my face. Lego. Lego. Hello. Okay. But yeah, so this is what they look like, and they do have like it's it's legitimately a Lego. Okay. Ow. Ow. It's so much harder than I expected. Hmm. Okay. These are really crunchy. They're really good. I expected them to be kind of shit. Do you know what they, they taste exactly like Smarties? That's what it is. This is like a harder Smartie. It's like if a, if a smart if a Smartie was a little bit harder, that's exactly what this tastes like. I'm blown away. I really, really thought this would be me mediocre. I really thought this would be mediocre. I'm blown away. I'm gonna have to tell my friend how cool these are. So what the candy Lego? I will not. I I I did my time in high school, alright? I'm I'm not going back. We've all snorted Smarties in our time, okay? I have an urge to eat random shit constantly, and recently it's been rocks, so I now have chocolate rocks, and it looked like you picked up a handful of pebbles. I love chocolate rocks. I haven't been able to find them in years, but I absolutely adored chocolate rocks. So, I worked at a candy stand before, and I remember those things. See, it, I'd never seen them before. So, shout out to Candy Blocks. Build them and eat them. The candy you can play with. I, I think this is brilliant. I think it's super cool ideas. So shout out to shout out to Candy Blocks. Go get yourself some. Yeah, absolute feral autistics. Because I know you need them. I forgot I'm hella broke after that one pull. Oh yeah, you have none of your bits anymore, Stigma. You guys you guys lost all your bits on Gambas. I was like, what they have chocolate in them and then remembered you're American. Dear fellow Canadians. He means they taste like rocket Oh yeah, sorry, for the Canadians, rockets, not smarties. Smarties for me. I don't have the urge to eat random shit. Well, that's a lie. I just chew my poor nails. That's valid. Oh, sorry, be god No, it's fine. No, 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 no. P.O. Shut the fuck up. No. <laughs> that makes so much more sense. Yeah, no. Here, hang on, hang on, hang on. S smart, smart, smarties. Uh, these. These are... These, these are smarties. These things... Those are- these are Smarties to me. I'm a dirty, dirty American, and these- this is what a Smartie is in- in my brain. Not- not whatever the fuck the- this shit is. That's- that's- that's not it. Um, we also have, like, these, which are, like, Smartie Suckers. These things fucking pop off. These are so good. So. Yeah, no. Not- not whatever the fuck this shit is. <laughs> Jesus and Papier. Pe- pe- Papier. I've just insulted so many people. I've just insulted your entire family. I'm really sorry. Anyways. I thought you meant the chocolate. No, 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 not the chocolate. I lived in America for like five years. I should have known you should have. I'm disappointed in you, actually. Instead of you being disappointed in me or me disappointing myself, I'm disappointed in you. That makes more sense? Okay, I'm glad. I can't speak French either. God damn it. <laughs> I, then I, I specifically insulted Tess. I can relate simply because I got rocket suckers growing up. Yeah, they're good. They're good. They're very good. All right. So. Uh, wee wee, but spelt like it's Wisconsin, Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you insult? I tried to say something in French and it went poorly. That's all. I went to a bonfire yesterday and the flame was like twice my height. I loved those. It tastes like the candy necklace things. They taste exactly like that, yeah. Candy necklace is a, a fantastic summary. Or, like, comparison, I guess. I'm at this like now. No worries. Um, so. Let's talk streaming, because I'm actually here to stream technically. By technicality. Um, I've never tried this before, except for at the beginning of stream, or a beginning of the day on the subathon of day two, when I was eating breakfast, I decided to put a video on for you guys. But I've never done true reaction content. Right, and I'm a huge fan of Sneak Snag. She, shout out to Sneak Snag because he's my number one inspiration and also is about to be a dad. Oh my god, congratulations. But anyways, Sneak. Um, and Sneak does something called Crime Time, right? 
and crime time is a, a thing where he watches usually jcs videos which are like crime videos of people who just got like uh arrested and like is like it like posted videos about like criminals going through like interrogations and he adds like concepts that he has and thoughts to the conversation while he also usually plays like runescape or some shit in the background but off screen like you watch the video with him and consume the content through him whatever i was just watching a stream a sneak stream earlier today because i like consuming my content through him because it's like consuming my content with someone right so I was like, what if I tried that? I've never done reaction content because I feel like people won't like it or that like I won't have enough to add or that it won't be interesting or that people just won't care. But I came to a realization, right? Nobody cares already. So what does it matter? <laughs> if it doesn't matter what I'm doing on stream because people just want to come and hang out on stream and a fucking Maybe I'll like 10, maybe I'll have 10 viewers, maybe I'll be at 50. Fuck it, I, fuck it if I know. I've decided I'm gonna do that. But instead of crime time, you guys saw the fucking episode name today. It's conspiracy time. I'm stealing Sneak Snag's idea, which is everybody else's idea too. Um, I wanna watch conspiracy videos and talk them over with you guys because I'm a slut for conspiracies. I fucking love conspiracies. The weirder, the better. The more like absolutely fucking out there, what the fuck are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense, but wait, those are the conspiracies I'm here for. So I thought I'm, I, I would like to start with one of my absolute favorite wild ass conspiracies out there. Father B, if you can come up with an entire conversation based around one sentence in chat, you can do react content. I believe in you. Okay, maybe. So I'm just, I just, I think it'll be fun to react to with you guys. So I, I want to introduce you to guys if you haven't already been to introduce because this video, when I first watched it, only had maybe a hundred thousand something views. Um, and I just, I looked it back up to watch it with you guys today and it now has almost 8 million views. So maybe you've all seen this at this point, but I thought we're going to do it together. There is a man on YouTube whose name is Doug Woolever, okay? And Doug has had two videos he's ever posted on YouTube, right? He has only ever posted two videos. And the first one was the G-Man, in which he talks about some other I things have... that he does, you know? It's a G-Man mods video that he had, um, where he essentially would mod uh, older games, like older handheld game styles, and show you the different things that you can do uh, with them and the different mods that you can physically do to those game stations, right? This was the first video he posted four years ago. And then, out of nowhere, a year later, he posted a video titled SpongeBob SquarePants Skin Theory. That video now has 8 million views, was posted three years ago, and he has never posted again, ever. <laughs> He just dipped. He just dipped off the fucking internet. Um, and he has clarified he's not coming back to YouTube. He doesn't ever plan to be a content creator and it, all of that things, right? And so, uh, he, he, he answered some questions down in the bottom, right? And said, I made this video because I randomly came up with an idea and I enjoy the video editing process. Couldn't be me. It was not for a school project or work or a contest. I shared it with some close friends and upon completion, uploaded it here for storage. I nearly forgot about it, but everything changed when the algorithm attacked. As I said, 8 million views. It took somewhere between 100 and 200 hours spread across three months to research, write, record, and edit the video. The time commitment was ridiculous for zero financial return. He made no money off of this, despite it having 8 million views, because he never monetized his channel. Um, I appreciate all the subs in the comments, but I have no plans to release more videos soon or become a regular YouTuber. I might make another video someday, but it will have nothing to do with Spongebob cartoons or conspiracy theories. Inspiration is fickle, and I do this for fun. And the final thing says, if you can't tell whether skin theory was meant to be satire or not, good. And thus... Skin Theory was born. Skin Theory is now one of the most widely known and recognized conspiracy theories of the entire SpongeBob fan base. And yeah, there's a SpongeBob fan base. It is wild. 
Dad, I'm making bread and the dough is currently rising. I'm slightly worried it might not work because it's my first time making bread. Also, yeast smells disgusting. It does smell disgusting. And if it's your first time, it may go badly, but that's okay because it's your first time doing something. The first time any of us rode a bike, we fell off. You get used to it. If you're if you're if you fall off of your bread, get back up and try again. I believe in you. You've got this shit. It's it's okay to fail on your first try at things. It's okay to fail at your hundredth try at things. That's 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 what learning is. Get back up and fail better the next time. So, if we all are, if we are all down and 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 we are all uh, down to clown, I would like to invite y'all to watch with me SpongeBob Theory, the Skin Theory. Dude, you're so positive. Thanks, French Toast. I, I, it's 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 more of just like, I don't know how to I don't it's how do I how do I explain? It's not necessarily like over positivity. It's just like a part of life, you know. Like you're gonna fail, like. I don't know. It's stu it's stuff I've learned having a fucking a weird ass life. You know, you learn it from other people and you kind of pick up on the fact that like, yeah, you're going to fuck up at shit. Like you're supposed to. You're a fucking human. If you didn't fuck up at shit, you'd be really weird. It's if you if you mess up your bread, I'll take it. Yeah. Mess up your bread. Mess it up a hundred times. That's the fucking how are you ever going to get good at something if you don't fail at something repeatedly? That's like part of how learning works. It's something, I'm going on a rant, a small rant, I'm sorry, and then we'll watch the thing. My fact is, when did I pick this up? I'm holding the fucking sour spray. I need to, like, not be allowed to pick things up. The, the, the point I was trying to make is that, for some reason, the internet has recently vilified the concept of fucking up. Like, like the, the concept of, like, dis, like, you know, like, making mistakes. And it makes me so frustrated, because... Why the fuck would you villainize making a mistake if that is literally the only way to get better at something? Like, there is literally no way to improve at something without fucking up. But the internet now has, like, made it sure that if you fuck up and you fuck up publicly, you're over. Like, they will never let you go of that shit. Like, if you say something and you get something wrong on the internet, instead of, like, educating you and letting you grow as a person, they will hold it to you for the rest of your life. And yes, there are some things that probably should be held to for the rest of your life, even if you grow out of it, just a gentle reminder of like, hey, don't do that. But like, it's it's one of those things that like, I don't know, ma'am. If you if you draw somebody, say like, and this is this is one of the random ones. If you draw like a uh, say it's like a a fucking a black character, right? And you draw them, and it's like super stereotypical. And somebody comes on and is like, hey, that's really not a, a like a cool way to draw like you know black like creators or black like black characters those are what i wanted like why don't you try this other way or whatever and look into some things and then you go and you learn some things and you improve and you do better and now you've learned because you made a mistake that's the way things are supposed to work instead of like i'm gonna get canceled on the internet and murdered uh, not murdered but you know what i mean like there's a reason like that like a lot of people won't even try anymore people have lit I've, like people have said and have also not said like people have said publicly and also just thought privately of like the concept of like I, I don't draw black characters because I'm too afraid to get it wrong. Like, that is something that so many people say. Like, like it is wild. Yeah, and that's why I say nothing out loud so I can't be wrong. But being wrong is how we learn. Make mistakes. You said to try something and fail on New Year's, and so I started making music and failed and tried again, and I failed, and then I joined a band, and now we have recording sessions that weekend and a gig coming up. Yes! I'm so proud of you. That is that my New Year's resolution this year and my challenge to everybody who was there with me on New Year's and is there with me now is fail at something. I, my, my challenge was be bad at something. And fuck it, I'm here today being bad at something and my something today is going to be reaction content. Do I know how to do this? Well, I don't know. I've never done this before. I'm going to do it anyways, though. Like... And do that over and over again. I'm writing a fan fiction right now, uh, something I've never done for this fandom, and I'm, I'm writing it in a style that I don't normally try, and I'm gonna fucking post it, and I'm just gonna do it, and I'm gonna be bad at it, and that's gonna be okay. Like, it's you're supposed to fuck things up to ever get better. Anyways, that's why I was learning to play Black Parade on a cat piano. That's it. I'm bad at existing? Good. You're, you're, the being bad at it is the only way you're gonna learn to be good at it. And that, in, that includes shit like existing or being a friend. You're gonna fuck up. You're gonna make mistakes. That's how you learn. You're gonna be a bad friend. You're gonna be a bad boyfriend. You're gonna be a bad girlfriend. You're gonna be a, a bad mother. You're gonna be a, a bad child. You're gonna be a bad brother. You're gonna be a bad 
everything every relationship you are in for the first time ever you're gonna be bad at it you're gonna fuck up you're gonna make mistakes that is called learning it's not called being a toxic person not at the beginning of things it, it's it's how you learn more often than not you are not going to be a perfect mother on your first round around round like with with children it doesn't matter how much you've prepared for it you will have moments that you fail as a parent and you will have moments that you fail as a child and you will fail as a friend and you will fail as a romantic partner and you will fail over and over and over again because that is how you learn to be someone if your first couple of friendships as a child failed completely and everything fell apart and you never got to talk again sometimes that just happens because neither of you knew how to be friends yet and you made those mistakes and you look back now and you don't do it again it, it's it's learning it's being part of it, learning how to be people you weren't a toxic fucker as a child you you weren't being a, a toxic friend you weren't an evil person you weren't manipulative and abusive you were learning how to be a friend you were learning how to be a person you made mistakes you get better you will always be the villain in somebody's story that's okay that's fine let them have their story you have yours I watch Bluey and they teach this lesson a lot. I, I, they do. Bluey is very big in my household right now. My, my parents' household. Half of that was talking to young me, admittedly. I, I constantly refer to my younger self as manipulative and abusive and horrible, but it wasn't. I was autistic and not sure how to take care of myself and not sure how to be a friend and constantly convinced that I was just a really bad friend and a really bad person and I wouldn't ever be able to hold healthy friendships. And it's not true. I can hold healthy friendships. Sure, I'm not an easy person to be friends with. Autism makes things hard sometimes. Rejection sensitive dysphoria makes things hard sometimes. But, you know, it, do it doesn't mean I was a bad person then and it doesn't mean I'm a bad person now. And that goes for everyone here. So, anyways, that is my my little my little positivity rant for the day, I suppose, or whatever kind of rant you want to call it. Ranch, rant. Did I say ranch? I don't want to talk about it. It's fun. <laughs> I'm sorry, my brain is just absolutely fried today. Um, my ADHD is kind of all over the place. I've been on my month's journey for a while, and I need an update, Dad. Wait, I've been on my month's journey for a while and I need an update. Wait, what update? You need to come to be my school and make speeches? I'm so ready. I'm so behind on what? You don't have to, of course. Wait, wait, on what? What are you behind on? Xander, also a reminder, you make all of our lives and moments right now. Oh, on yes? What's on yes? What's on yes? Help, help. It's been since like last year, since, since when? For what? Help. What are, you, what are you talking about? That have been gone. Do you just mean on me? An update on me? It, I, oh, <laughs> why do you want an update on me? I'm not interesting. What are you lost on? <laughs> we don't need an update on me as a person. I have nothing interesting in my life. My mom said that knowing I was probably autistic helped my family so much with understanding and helping me. That really shows that things get better if people know what's going on. It's true. That's that's true. Honestly, ending a rant about letting yourself mess up and then ending it with messing up a word is perfect. All right, thanks, Draw Bunny. Uh, don't lie to me, you're very interesting. Okay, all right, fine. Here's your quick summary of how this year has gone for me, okay? Since January, it's been a month and a half. It's been almost two months now. I started a new job as a front desk worker, uh, thought I could really enjoy it, turns out I am actually immediately burnt out and completely, like, job avoided and I, I hate it a lot, uh, but it's okay and I'm getting through it and I'm able to pay my rent. I started going to therapy again, I just had my first session, it was really fucking awkward, um, only because first sessions are awkward, it's like, hi, nice to meet you, this is my name, and also, here are the most traumatic things that happened to me in my life and my entire mental history disorders, uh, hope that's going well. I'm a crunchy egg, that's my only update, so true, Tess, so true. Um, I, uh, I found out that I'm no longer going to be move, uh, living in this, uh, apartment, and I'm no longer going to get to live with my roommate that I've lived with for the past four years. Cried about that a whole bunch, which was really fun, um, uh, because she's my best friend, and I can't imagine living anywhere else. Um, and then found out that I can manage, uh, decided to pack up my entire life, and I now have 93 days until I pack up and leave to go live out of state for the first time ever, which is horrifying, and I cannot believe that's happening, but it's happening in 93 days, and I can't stop it. It's gonna happen. Um, and I 
uh, had my subathon. We reached a year and a half long of streaming. Uh, we hit 4,000 followers here on Twitch. Um, I just finished a script for a new long form YouTube video that I'm recording. I'm also editing a couple videos at the moment. Um, I fucking get to go back to the rheumatologist uh, to talk about the different things that are happening with me, like this really fun spotting I have on my hand right now. Can you even see that? Do you see like the spotting that goes like all the way up? I get some really weird shit. Anyways, I don't have arthritis, but I probably have several other disorders that I have going on with my joints, so we're gonna figure that one out. Um, what else is there? I don't know. That's a, that's a good summary of most of the things that are happening. My therapist asked me if I was single. The answer is still yes. Thanks, Jenna. <laughs> but there you go. You're moving? I am. Um, I'm moving out of state. <laughs> I'm moving out of state. I'm horrified about it. Um, it's not gonna be crazy far. It really isn't. It's like maybe five or six months. It's maybe five or six hours away from where I live now. Um, but it's it's still really big um, and really spooky. And I'm not going to get to live with the person that I have regulated my entire life around for the past four years. Um, and that's really the biggest scare. That's the thing that scares me. Living in another state, it's fine. I'll be okay. Um, living without my regulation, my emotional regulation, I don't know how I'll do. Also, I have ended up with something in my hand again. This is like, I'm, I, I just, I just pick things up. Um, but it's okay. I knew living with her wasn't going to be forever. And I knew that eventually, like, all of the friends that I live with or whatever, the, the, you know, it, people are going to find romantic partners and want to go and live with their romantic partners and have a life outside of their friends. Totally understand that. Um, so I knew this wasn't going to be a forever. I just didn't realize it would be so soon. So, that's okay. Just because I don't want to go find a romantic partner to live with doesn't mean I can't find friends to live with or something, you know? So, that's all right. It's Arrow, I just changed my name. Oh, so, wait, you're Arrowbo, but now you're Archer Arlo. Hello, welcome in. Good to see you. It makes you feel better. I randomly have a spoon in my hand. That's so valid. But yeah, I, I, there I am. There you go. I'm just moving because my parents don't love each other anymore. I've been there. But... Uh, Ash had said, I'm so used to my friends not actually liking me or hanging out with me that I've actually started just literally being, been making up stories in my head where people liked me for years and I don't know how to properly talk to anyone that's not someone I know online. I 100% understand that one. Emily just made a TikTok about that, that I, I know better how to make friends and talk to each other uh, on the internet than I do in person. And man, oh man, if that isn't the truth. So that's, that's a thing, I suppose. That's part of my life. But, you know, <laughs> I say my best, these are too many people. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. Anyway, shout out to Emily's TikTok. She she made a really good art piece around that that whole concept. She's making a little art thing about it right now. Um, anyways, Ash, hello. I have to go make, make my bread now. Good luck with the bread. Best of luck, you've got this. Um, I cannot, like, cannot make friends IRL. It's not easy. I used to have an invisible friend named Ryan, I was so convinced he was real. Listen, I was one of those autistic kids who was like convinced that people were lying about having imaginary friends and mad that I didn't have them because I thought other kids like genuinely thought they were real and didn't realize that everybody who had imaginary friends were playing pretend. Like they were making up imaginary friends. They didn't just have invisible people they really believed in. Cause like, I like saw like, like media, like, like videos, like movies and like TV shows were like, these kids like really talked to their imaginary friends and the imaginary friends talked back and they were like real and you could like, people could like see them and like they were like playing with them like they were real people. And I was so mad that I didn't have that until I realized like two weeks ago that like people were all, everyone else was literally just pretending. It was, it was all just fake. Like I, I was, that everyone else was just playing. I'm so mad. Uh, freshly baked bread is like the best thing in the world. Nothing more than just... I can- I can eat nothing more but just freshly baked warm bread. You know what? That's so valid. Yeah, freshly baked bread is a, a, a good win. If you think really hard, you can almost see them. Bullshit. I call bullshit. I mean, I kind of was like that once I like made them up in my head, sure. But they weren't just like there. Like, I made them up. You know? Like, I had a dog. My- <laughs> 
that's gotta say something about me. My my imaginary friend was a dog that could uh, shape shift sizes, um, and like it would like it would like it, it could grow to whatever size it was, like like tiny to like massive. And whenever I was in the 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 car, I would like watch out the car window and imagine him like running alongside, and he could like jump on the street lamps and get bigger or smaller to like get through the area. Anyways, Sandy, who were you when you played Family Raccoon? <laughs> you want to guess, Rat King? Who was who was little Zandy when we played uh when we played family as a kid? You wanna guess? You wanna guess? No, it sure wasn't the dad. <laughs> yeah, I was the dog! I was the dog! <laughs> I was the fucking dog! Be like, you're gonna be mom, and you're gonna be dad, because we only play heterosexual games as a kid, and you're gonna be the kid, and I'll be the dog. <laughs> Woof. Oh my god. Furry moment? Please, no! We're, why are we always furry truthing me on this channel? We are always furry truthing me. Everything I do is getting furry truthed. I'm exhausted. I say, having recently designed a fursona live on stream just for fun. You'll be the mom, and you'll be the dad, and you'll be the gay uncle. <laughs> Please, I was so insistent on not being the mom. Yeah. I had Lucifer as my imaginary friend. Same. Same. I cannot explain to you in full detail, but yes. Says the person with the FNAF plush in the background. Do you want it? Do you want an admission? Do you, do you, do you want me to admit something? I've never played FNAF before. Never. I just, for some reason, really liked Foxy. And got him from a fair. I've never played FNAF. I watched Markiplier play FNAF. I watched him play all of them. No, no, don't follow him, please! Um... I watched Markiplier play every single one of the FNAF games, so I know all the story. Um, I've just legitimately never played the game. But I like Foxy. I don't know why. I just think he's cool. He's Julian coded, I'm gonna be real. My friend convinced me I had magical powers once and I sat in my room trying to move stuff. Do you know what I was convinced of as a kid? Do you know what I was convinced of? I was convinced I had wings. No, don't write a paragraph about me on Twitter, please. No, listen, anything but that. Anything. I will do whatever you do what what do you want grim what do you want huh you're holding me hostage here please don't report me to twitter don't report me to twitter i'm begging you oh god i love foxy and funtime freddy that's valid i don't know why i just think he's the most relatable shit i've ever heard in my life please give me your soul it's yours all yours take it take it i, di I didn't need it in the first place i'm gonna be honest i stream on twitch i already don't have one anymore um but yeah, no, I, I, was, I didn't have an imaginary an imaginary friend as a kid, but I was 100% convinced that I had wings. That I was supposed to have wings, or I did have wings. Like, I could, I could feel it. Like, I knew, I, j I just knew, man. I thought about, yeah. I had a babysitter convince me everyone grows a thick mustache at the age of 14. <laughs> Trans Vandal, that is such a hyper-specific situation to find yourself in. That is so funny. Did you? Did you magically burst forth a mustache at the age of 14? I have to know now. Because that is fucking magical. It's like the Spongebob episode. I totally fucking believed him. You never, like, saw a 15-year-old without a mustache and started thinking, like, hmm, maybe my babysitter was full of absolute crap. Like... That's wild. I wished so fucking hard I had wings, dead ass. I I'm I'm a uh, like a hyper uh, realistic like dreamer, whatever you call it. Like uh, I I have lucid. I have lucid dreamings. There we go. Um, I lucid dream um with like tactile senses, like I can feel things or whatever. And in my dreams, I would have wings. Um, so like I. I know, like, and this is, okay, I'm gonna be so real. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so real. This is gonna make me sound insane, but it's fine. I know what it's like to have wings. Like, I know what it feels like. I know where it sits on my back. I know what those muscles feel like. I know, like, the weight of them. Like, I know how to move them properly. Like, I know what it feels like to have wings sit on my back and to fly with them. Like, I know what the, the wind feels like. I know what the, the pit in my stomach feels like when I drop. Like, I know how it feels to tuck them in around me. I know what the feathers feel like. And it's literally just because I've had dreams where I had wings. And I can I can remember them so vividly. Like, and it wasn't even like I just had them and I suddenly could fly. Like, I remember, like, learning how to use them and the weight of them and, like, trying to maneuver and bouncing them off of things. And, like, it, it is something that has sat with me my entire life and haunted me because I know I'm supposed to have them. And I don't. It's fucking wild. Isn't that a spiritual thing? I have literally no clue. I never ever spoke to it about anybody because I thought everybody would think I was crazy. And now I'm outing myself publicly on the internet. The only people I ever talked to about it was like Rumi and like maybe some friends. Had a melting faster than Frosty. Be God, please, man. But yeah, this is that was that was like a whole. That's a whole thing, man. I I don't know what to say about it. But yeah, that's Sand Dead coming out as trans species. I am not trans species, please. See this Grim, this is why I don't I don't talk about it. Cause I'm gonna be told I'm trans species or some shit. I'm not trans species. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. I used to do quads before I figured out quads was a thing. That yeah, so did I. I haven't had that experience. One time I had a dream where I had wings and it was wild and I woke up and it was so sad. Yeah. Hey, Jack, how are you? Hello, hello. Me and me wanna be. Yeah, it's just, it's just, what are we talking about? Uh, wanting to have wings and like dreaming that I had wings and like knowing what they feel like. Also, uh, let me pull something up for you, uh, Jack, to, to, to show, to show, hang on, hang on, wait, wait, hold, people hop, people hop. People hopping, people hopping. Ta-da! It's up. <laughs> They're all of them are available now. This is this is a thing. This is this is a thing. This is this is a thing now. I'm losing my marbles. Uh, so yeah, those those are all available. Go and go and go and go and go and get your fingies on them. They just went up as of today. <laughs> Holy crap! I'm shitting everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. That's 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 officially a thing. Help yourself. I I hope you enjoy. Oh my god. Okay. So, <laughs> despite the fact that we have now had a hour long intro to stream, I think we might have weeded out all of the people who came back expecting good quality uh content. All the people were like, "Man, this person hasn't streamed in a while. Maybe he'll come back with some really high quality content." I think we've weeded out all of those people. And we can get into the the shit content so i think it's shit content time um you, you can't be given the content at the beginning of stream all those people are going to be there expecting something i have nothing to offer my hands hurt so bad today oh my god whoopsies what are you whoopsieing i thought outside of earth there was just like darkness and nothing else that's so valid <laughs> that your best quality that yeah no 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 I'm, I'm i'm just here doing my best so are we ready do we actually want to do i'm like nervous that we took an hour to start oh no 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 it's no no worries no worries no worries i was having a good time i'm i'm just taking after tubbo now the two people i take after are 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 tubbo and sneak snag because Tubbo takes an hour and a half to actually start stream, and it's like an hour and a half of like just starting or just chatting or starting soon, and then Sneak with his like just his general content and energy. Both of them. If you get Tubbo and Sneak and me got in a chat, we would get absolutely nothing done ever whatso whatsoever. Like nothing at all. It's it is just fully wild. Um, top quality dad. Thank y'all. All right. Are we actually down to, to do this? I'm like anxious. I don't know why. I do indeed have skin and I'm stuck in an ad. I'm uh, taking the L. You're really taking the L. Ollie's cult. Hello. Thank you for the follow. I didn't know Ollie had a cult, but hey, pops, like, pop off, I suppose. 
I'm gonna show my mom the piss pants. I can't believe you get to go show your mom. That's so cool. Congratulations. It's so fun. I do. Hey, yo. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's go, Dino. Let's go. I like the cult going on. Welcome home. Honor to have you. There's so many Ollies now. We're collecting them. First, while you were ranting, I was embroidering a heart into my knee brace. As for the second thing, my middle name was given to me because I had so many lucid dreams involving having wings and can vividly remember the way the wings feel. That's so cool. That is, that is fantastic. My dad ordered fucking square pizza. Oh my god. I like that you put dad in quotation marks as it, like, I know it might have a different connotations, but it sounds like because he ordered square pizza, you have disowned him as your father. And I think that's far funnier than anything it might actually mean. But that is really funny. It is like my dad ordered square pizza. Fuck that man. Like that is, that is so hyper specific. Okay. All right. I'm pausing the music. I'm, I'm giving in. We're going to actually watch this because I need you guys to experience this with me. <sighs> so. Today we are going to watch this, this video called SpongeBob SquarePants skin theory so this is this is this is a theory that was posted uh three years ago it has no explanation for where the fuck it came from somebody just noticed a bunch of truths about spongebob and i just i need you guys to be with me in this moment and experience this conspiracy with me and uh we're gonna have a good time with it also if you see me looking down during it i have adhd so i'm i usually am doing more than one thing I also have my tablet here. I have some line art I really need to finish uh, for a commission that I have. So don't don't you even stress about it. It's totally fine. I'm going to be line arting, but I'm also paying full attention. I also have seen this entire video once uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and it feels like a fever dream. So. I also have ADHD. I understand. All right. All right. We're going to go here. Yes. People sitting. I don't have people watch. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. If we're going to try reaction content for the first time uh we we hang on i need btt bt btt bt 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 bb tb fucking huh <laughs> give me a second uh people watch i follow adhd you're so true okay okay uh which people watch do we want people watch mm. which people which people watch do we want we could do watchers we could do watchers people watchers i don't think i have like i don't want people watch because people watch is the one where it's like like the this We're just we're just gonna go watchers. We're gonna go with watchers. We're gonna go with watchers, y'all. All right, it's on the channel because now you can people sit in watchers. There you go. Watchers has been added to chat. Yes, we do also have the the test stare emote. That is always an option. So now you have people sit, people sit, and watchers. I don't know if the, there you go. People sit in watchers. You can you can play with those now. Alrighty. I hope you guys are willing to, to play this game with me today. There you go. Now you have the watchers emote. It, it's not even people watchers. It's literally just watchers. Here, we're all people sitting. Polite chatters. I'm back. My mom said that it's cool. My brother said I got gypped, but I told him I wanted to do it. You did what? <laughs> you got gypped. Do you want me to pay you for it? You did win the, the, the thing, but hey, listen, pay your artists, everybody. If, if I had the money to pay my artists, I, I I would have paid all three of the winners, but I, I do not. But hey, if these if this merch sells like pancakes, just watch. I'll, I'll reach out to you and pay you. 50% of the profits of whatever sells from your art, it goes to you. So whatever sells, I'll, I'll give you the money. I'll give, I'll give you 50% of whatever it sells for. You've got like a 50% stake in the profit. Deal, 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 deal. All right. You got a fifty percent. You get a fifty percent profit. Profit. Okay. Damn. <laughs> All right. You guys ready for this? This is gonna be so ridiculous. SpongeBob SquarePants skin theory. I I hope I hope I hope this goes well. I talk too much for this shit. Hopefully you guys can hear this okay.
This is the conspiracy <clears throat> we're watching. All right, let's do this. You are about to see three short clips from the popular cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants. As you watch, try to find the one theme that they all have in common. Ready? Okay, hang on. I'm going to turn on subtitles. There we go. I'm going to turn on subtitles, and also, um, if you need the video louder or quieter, let me know. Let me know if you need it louder or quieter, and feel free to comment or talk about this in chat. I want to react off of all of your guys. Hey, these patties sure are delicious. I wonder what's in that secret formula. <laughs> Everyone at the head enhancement clinic said nobody would notice. <laughs> Some people are even late on Sunday. Hi, male face. I'm just gonna. I don't believe there are any trigger warnings needed because all of the clips included are SpongeBob. Uh, so trigger warning for SpongeBob. That's all I have for you. Maybe specifically this clip. This is the only clip that scared me as a child, so I guess I'll trigger warning for this. I don't know if there's a, there's a trigger or just a content warning or whatever. This is just, in this clip, uh, it, they overlay an image of, a, like, a guy in, like, a gorilla suit, and it's it's just really creepy. So just, like, warning for, like, it stops being a, like, it, it's still a cartoon, but, like, in the cartoon, there's, like, a real human in a gorilla suit. It uh, well, You'll see. Now, Pat! <laughs> not that. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Okay, guys, really, this is your saddest attempt yet. Even Chip knows that's Patrick in the same costume he wore for Halloween last year. <laughs> no, really! You gotta come save me! Hey, Sandy, who's your friend? But, this but is... you're supposed to be in the gorilla suit. I am in the gorilla suit. I thought I was doing a pretty good job. Right. If you're Patrick, then who's this... that? <laughs> a real gorilla? Huh? Like... <laughs> This scared me so much as a kid. So that clip, seeing that unprompted as a child on TV for what was otherwise a completely normal episode scared me so much. It caught me so wildly off guard. It was otherwise a completely normal episode. And then it just did that. Anyways. Uh, back to the skin theory. Anything stand out? Let's take a closer look. Right, okay. Right. 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 I thought I was doing a pretty good job. If you're Patrick, then who's that? Ah, a real gorilla? Okay, you've seen the three clips now, right? You've seen the three clips. Take a wild guess. Yeah, you you've seen the title and you you've heard those three clips. What is what what are we talking about here? What is the thing that he's gonna say is like what's going on here? How did the male fish change gender in five seconds? Listen, uh, he's a really advanced trans. <laughs> that's how. That's how transgenders actually do it. Because they all have fake bodies over their actual bodies. Tyrio, you got that shit on the fucking nose, on the goddamn nose really advanced trans i ran out of brain cells to comprehend this so true they all fuck the all of them had fake bodies on top of their real bodies what it might strike you as a little weird that not one and not two but all three of these clips have specific references that to fucking fish image or wearing costumes or some kind of skin but this must be a coincidence right right a coincidence Right? SpongeBob skin going on for years. He found three pieces of evidence. That's all. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. And these aren't even a fraction of the clips that you are about to see. We're going to see all of Welcome them. Welcome to Skin. Bold and brash. Uh -huh, uh -huh. More like belongs in the trash. Very. None of you get that reference to that joke, and I hope you never do. <laughs> Thank you.
That's just a theory, a skin theory. Now, before we get rolling, a quick overview. All right, good, First, good, good. we'll explain the basics of skin theory and define it. Next, an in-depth analysis of one very important moment from the show. The salmon After suit. After that, you'll see every single example of skin theory currently known to exist. Right. Then, the various interpretations of skin theory we will have be discussed. We have sub-theories. And we'll try to answer some of the biggest questions concerning what it all means. And finally, we'll look at the creative minds behind SpongeBob, <laughs> who could have had a hand in creating skin theory, as well as one man in particular who might be responsible for it all, followed by some closing thoughts. Yeah. Now... Let's begin. This is a hell of a, just for reference, this is an hour and 10 minute video. Just so, you, just so you guys know what we're getting into. We have an hour and 10 minute video. I almost have one mil points, not on my channel, your ass doesn't. I know damn well who has the most points in this channel, and it ain't you. If you want to prove you have close to a million points on my channel, you'll have to send me an image, because I currently know who the person with the most points is, and it ain't you. I know damn well it ain't. I've been keeping tabs, motherfucker. Friend, friend, 9.2k is almost 10,000, not 1 million. That is, that is, 9.2k turns into 10k. <laughs> it's okay. No, it's okay. No, it's fine. And even if it was 99.2k, that turns into 100k. And that... <laughs> And that, yeah, so it's fine. You're, you're okay. It's fine. Um, I believe as of current standing, the person with the most is Ollie. And from what I last saw, she had, I think it was 170,000 points. I think it was 170,000. I know she was, she was well over 100K. And I think she sent a picture when she was at 169K. And I do not know after that, so... If anybody has over 170,000 points, yeah, 170k, yeah. So if anybody has more than that, let me know. Emily! Hi, Emily. How is stream? How are you? I hope you're doing well. How is stream, everybody? I have, you have 216k, Oblivion? Yeah, who had it already typed out? Tess had that shit ready. I'm impressed. Okay, wait, Oblivion. You have 216k points. Ollie did. Ollie already had typed out. Ollie, how many points do you have? Do you did Ollie also, uh, Ollie did, does does Oblivion have you beat? Oblivion, send a send a screenshot. I need I need I need a screen I need screenshot proof. Also, if any of you are sitting here, oh my god, 249k. Oh my god. You have so much more than I thought you last did. Holy shit, you have almost 250k points. Fucking god, you have so much more than I thought you did. Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, anyways, people are way richer than I thought. Fuck me, y'all. You could buy anything you wanted. GG, yeah, GG. Ollie, is, Ollie and Oblivion out here fucking absolutely wild. Everyone's gonna have more than me, though, through gambling? Nah, you, you and Oblivion, from what I know, are the people with the most now. I still feel illiterate, but keep flexing. No, it's okay, B-God. It happens to the best of us. Um, for those of you who joined in, I hope you enjoyed Emily's stream. I was there for the majority of it, and I just had it up on my, my phone as well. Um, so welcome in. How was Stardew? I hope it went well. Ouch, I have the hiccups now. My apologies. But I hope you enjoyed her stream. I very much was enjoying it before I had to run. So um, I have spent the t past hour doing absolutely nothing. We were just chitting and chatting. So you've come in at exactly the perfect time. We are about to get started on reaction content to, uh, something called SpongeBob SquarePants skin theory. Um, and we're about to go over the basics of what skin theory is, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, skin theory is, is now the most well-known SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, crack theory that there is. And... Man, just join me for this wild ride. This whole thing feels like a fucking fever dream. Let's learn the basics. Skin theory can be summarized with one basic definition and four supporting principles. The basic definition is all of this. You can read the- I'm gonna read this out loud for you. So the skin theory is the metatextual analysis of SpongeBob SquarePants, which recognizes and explores the significance of glaring thematic references to sea creatures who knowingly wear, remove, and exchange various forms of costumes, disguises, and skins in Bikini Bottom. A hey, quick question, what the fuck is going on? We are, 
watching uh, a conspiracy video called Skin Theory. That that's what's going on. That's that we're doing rea my first reaction con baby's first reaction content to Skin Theory. <laughs> so yeah. The metatextual analysis of SpongeBob SquarePants, which recognizes and explores the significance of glaring thematic references to see creatures who knowingly wear, remove, and exchange various forms of costumes, disguises, and skin in Bikini Bottom. This is skin theory. What did I just come into? I just explained, but I'm I'm with you. This is this is this is what we're doing. We are watching we we are watching skin theory. This is a conspiracy theory for SpongeBob SquarePants. Just run with me here. I promise it's definitely something. I, I, it's, oh God. The official definition here, but basically what this is all getting at is just one simple idea. And the idea is this. Within the show SpongeBob SquarePants, there are a shockingly high amount of these bizarre moments where some character will take off their skin or put on someone else's skin or use fake body parts or dress up like different types of fish or reveal human features underneath their fishy exterior. Yep. In simplest terms, that is skin theory. But the key here is that these moments are incredibly common. Way more common, in fact, than any other children's cartoon show. And that brings us to the first principle. Skin theory is based on the analogical nature of human society compared to what can be observed in Bikini Bottom. Or in other words- That is such a- hang on, go back. Okay. Skin theory is based on the analogical nature of human society compared to what can be observed in Bikini Bottom. This is horrifying. I know. Um. So yeah, this is this this is the concept of like how how normal it is in Bikini Bottom compared to how normal it would feel in the real world. Of human society compared to what can be observed in Bikini Bottom. Like if we did or this in, in the words, real world, the it would be insane. Of basic societal norms in Bikini Bottom are deeply disturbing. Right, that's what I'm saying. So it, it's this is a base of like societal norms, right? It, you can, if you're watching a child show and it's a show like SpongeBob and somebody takes off their head to reveal a smaller, slightly different colored head underneath, that would be fucking horrifying in the real world, right? But it's completely normal and glosses right over us in the contextual like, and, like situation of SpongeBob SquarePants because They've set up, like, through showing us over and over again that that's a normal thing that happens in the SpongeBob universe. And no one in the universe reacts to it. It just seems normal. So, it, it, it's, it's, it's reframing the idea of, like, what is a societal norm based on the TV show. It's so normal in SpongeBob, I just realized this. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm gonna see if, really quickly, hang on, let me see if I can... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go, boo. There, there we go. Because this is a square video, so that way it doesn't cut anything off. As for the second, skin theory is not hidden from the characters in SpongeBob. It is hidden from the viewer. This is the most wild part of this, at least personally, okay? Skin theory is not hidden from the characters in SpongeBob. It is hidden from the viewer. This whole concept of skin theory, like I said, the, the, the taking off other layer parts, like I said, no one reacts to it in SpongeBob. Like, the, the people seeing other people taking off body parts is completely normal to them. No one reacts. It seems like it's a completely normal, everyday situation for the characters in the show. But for us, the viewers, it's like, what the fuck is going on? Which is why the, the concept of it is not hidden from them. It's hidden from us. It is a normal part of their society, and it's only weird because we're viewing it from an external point of view. Dramatic irony, but fucking backwards. So essentially, all the sea creatures in Bikini Bottom are aware of this skin wearing. Exactly. And they recognize it as normal, acceptable behavior. Right. On to the next principle. Skin theory is propagated by extra textual forces. Right. Meaning skin theory isn't just a weird quirk that formed naturally or accidentally, but rather it was intentionally injected into the show like, by the writers, producers, this and is on showrunners purpose. who worked on it. Also, notice that the references to skin theory are densely concentrated within seasons one through four, but they rarely appear in seasons after that. And there is- I was just gonna say, there's a reason for that, because after season four is when the writers changed. There's an explanation for why, which we'll get to later. E. Anyway, the fourth principle. Skin theory is a multifaceted work in progress. Yes. So there isn't just one official interpretation, but rather there are multiple sub-theories out there. This includes the ritual aspect, the mass psychosis element, 
and the costumed human hypothesis. These are things that we'll cover later in the video that he covers like near the end. Once we've seen all the examples that there are to see, he goes over like what these possible like explanations are, which are, you know, the things on top screen that either this is some type of ritual, this is some sort of mass psychosis or costumed humans, which is a much creepier idea personally. And yes, those do sound completely insane. Yes, they do. But later on in the video, we're going to go into detail regarding all three. It is amazing. Okay, what's next? So at this point in the video, you might be thinking, this idea is ridiculous. Right. It's insane. Right, right. I would need to see many, many solid examples before I even think about believing it. Right. And that's good. Skepticism is good. We teach this, remember, when you stop asking questions is when you stop learning. But you're about to see those examples. After all, the three clips you saw at the beginning are only the tip of the iceberg. This is where it starts I'm to get out of trouble. Like class A suckeroonies. If you want arms like these. All right, all right, all right. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right. Before we can truly this is where it gets what's wild. going on here, we need to firmly grasp the first Firmly principle. grasp it. it. Now, this analogy isn't really something we think about when we watch the show, but it's always there, and it's very important. Right. There are a whole bunch of examples I can illustrate this point, but one in particular stands out as especially striking, specific, and deeply disturbing. Does anyone remember this episode? Because this is so... The salmon suit is such a... So, okay, for anybody who doesn't remember this episode, the episode comes from the episode of The Pie Factory, where SpongeBob eats a pie that was made from pirates in, like, a bomb factory, and Squidward thinks he's going to die... And so, like, for the entire episode, um, hey, Mezo! Welcome in, Mezo. Um, we are watching SpongeBob SquarePants Skin Theory Conspiracy. Like, is such a... The salmon suit and pulled that dramatic-ass title. It's so funny. Yeah, no, this, there's a lot going on. Um, we're watching a conspiracy theory about skin in SpongeBob SquarePants. But anyway, so Squidward spends the entire episode... Um, trying to, you know, fill, fill in SpongeBob's, like, like his list, right? His, his list of things that he wants to do before he dies. And he spends all day doing those things. And one of those things is show everybody in town to my friend Squidward. And then again, in, uh, he'll, he'll, oh my God, just, just watch this. Stop drinking coffee cream, you remembers freaks. remembers dying for pie. This is the episode. All-time classic episode from season two. Personally, I think this is one of the best SpongeBob episodes ever written. It's really right good. up there next to Band Geeks and Chocolate with Nuts. It's got tons of witty dialogue and iconic moments, but you it might not realize that it also has one of the most disturbing moments in cartoon history. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the scene we're talking about occurs while Squidward is attempting to help SpongeBob complete a list of fun bonding activities. Well, the first thing I want to do is show, show my best, best friend Squidward, Squidward to everybody, everybody in town. Hi there, this is my best friend Squidward. This face. Hey kids, check it out. This is my best friend Squidward. Hi, <laughs> I want to show you my best friend Squidward. Hey, Frank. What? That's over. Good, because we're on to our next activity. Which is? I'm going to show, show my best friend Squidward, Squidward to everybody in town wearing a salmon suit. suit. You're going to be wearing a salmon suit? <laughs> ah, that's a good one, Squidward. There it is. Next. So this scene might have struck you as a little strange when you first watched it, but in right. reality, it should strike you as downright horrifying. Kaiho, Kaibu, Kaibu, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome home. First off, right, my first question for this scene was, why the fuck is this on SpongeBob's to die list? Huh? Sp SpongeBob's dying and he wants to what? Put his friend in a fish costume and show him around to everybody in town? Why? Why is this, why is this the activity that you have on your list? When people say, if, the, if an asteroid was going to hit today, what would you want to do? This is not on my list. This is not on my list. And here's why. SpongeBob SquarePants is a show about fish and undersea creatures. Right. No surprise there. But these aren't real fish. They're interpretations of fish. And in these particular interpretations, they're meant to serve as parallels to human beings. Right. After all, if it was accurate to how sea creatures actually looked and behaved, the show would look something like this. Right. So it's not actually fish. It's supposed to be a representation of people just portrayed as fish. Which means, as you're remembering it, right, 
the, the, the fish are portrayed as fish because it's a kid's show, but they're meant to portray people. All fish in the show were meant to represent people. Fish equal human. Keep that in brain. Riveting. So anyway, in order for the show to work, Bikini Bottom needs to be a nearly perfect parallel of human society. Right. For instance, we see things like boatmobiles, shell phones, and Krabby Patties, and our mind immediately jumps to the real-world parallel that these objects are clearly referring to. Uh -huh. In this case, it's a car, right. a cell phone, uh -huh. and a hamburger. Uh -huh. But the same premise applies to broader concepts about society as well. Right. For instance, just like how our society runs on a currency system, where people exchange cash and work jobs to earn money, the same is true in Bikini Bottom. Exactly. And just like how our society employs a criminal justice system, the same is true in Bikini Bottom. Right. And lastly, our society uses relatable humor as a form of leisure, and so does Bikini Bottom. Right. For example, if someone- It is a parallel of society, right? I see everybody in chat slowly starting to get this and understand what I'm saying. I, everybody is slowly starting to, to catch up on, on what people are thinking, right? B Bikini Bottom is a parallel for the world. Uh, you know, the fucking boatmobiles are cars. The Krabby Patties are hamburgers. Shell phones are cell phones. Fish are humans. He wants to show all his people... Oh, he wants to show his best friend Squidward to everyone in town wearing a salmon suit. A salmon. A fish. Fish are human. One does something funny in Bikini Bottom, that same action should be equally funny if it were to occur in human society. Right. And from this, it also follows that unacceptable behavior in Bikini Bottom would be considered unacceptable behavior in human society. Correct. So far, this should all just be common sense. Yeah. And this is where things get disturbing. Correct. Salmon is a type of fish. Now, to us, fish are just fish. Right. You know, simple animals who are caught and eaten every day. No big deal. But to the citizens of Bikini Bottom, fish are people. Fish are their friends, their neighbors, their family. Fish are literally everywhere they look. All right, and for the people who are like, we we have human suits, we have, you know, fat, we have, like, suits that you put on, uh, he'll explain in a minute why this isn't just, like, wearing, like, say, like, a fat suit or wearing, like, a, you know, like a, a, a mascot of a human. He'll, he'll explain in a moment. So when Squidward puts on this horrifying suit of a salmon, the kids aren't just seeing a funny pink costume, they're seeing a complete stranger walk up to them wearing the naked skin of someone they probably know. I mean, this kid even looks like a salmon. What if he is a salmon? What if his whole family is a <laughs> bunch of salmon? Think about how disturbing that would be for him. <laughs> this costume is not okay. It's beyond messed up right. to think that Squidward would actually do this. Let me put this another way. What would you do if you and your friends were walking in a park one day, just minding your own business, when suddenly a stranger comes up out of nowhere and, oh, what do you know? He's literally wearing the loose, severed skin of a naked human being. That's the equivalent. It's not a mascot costume in the way it's portrayed. It's, it's the skin of someone. It's a flayed suit. And there's a reason for that, and it's the coloring. And I think he explains it. I think he explains it. If he doesn't explain it, I can explain it to you in a moment. Are you kidding me? And what if he tried to talk to you? I mean, that's probably why they're throwing rocks. Squidward looks like he just murdered somebody. <laughs> Seriously, this is like Silence of the Lambs, but worse. This is supposed to be a kid's show. Oh, but wait, that's not even as bad as it gets. Right. Because this isn't actually what a salmon looks like. That's where that there it is. There's the specifics. The the outfit he's in isn't what a salmon looks like. What is a flayed suit? Yeah, a, fl a flayed suit is in like a, a a suit made out of flayed human skin. But here's here's the actual here's the kicker. That's not what a salmon looks like. That 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 costume that he's wearing. And I'm not talking about the animation style. I'm talking about the color. Now, I know most of you have probably eaten salmon before, and right. yes, it's always been this kind of off pink color. Right. But really think about that for a second. That's how it looks on your plate uh -huh. after it's been cleaned, filleted, 
and cooked. Yeah. So on the inside, yes, salmon meat is pink. But what about the outside? What do real salmon look like? Salmon who are actually alive. Uh Uh-huh. Gray. Gray. They look gray. That's a salmon. In reality, you need to cut the skin off before... (laughs) You have to cut... Any pink parts even begin to show, which means... Squidward's salmon suit isn't only the naked, hideously deformed representation of a sentient (laughs) member of Bikini Bottom society. It's also supposed to be a salmon that has had all of its outer skin sliced (laughs) off. Holy (laughs) s***. Hopefully now you're beginning to see how some of the most harmless moments from Salmon is Red can completely collapse in the blink of an eye. So, obviously, yeah, 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 there's, 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 here, hang on, let me, hang on, hang on now, kings, just, just, just to satiate you, because you're, you, you're very intent, I can pull up a king salmon, and they do look like this, which is what I, I based Sally off of, that's the wrong thing, it, it looks like this, which is still very much not exactly what he's wearing, like, even, like, the, the, the face is still silver kind of situation, like, you you can get you can get reddish pinkish ones kind of thing, right? But also, it's it this is this is just a stretch theory. Yeah, of course it is. It's a fucking it's a SpongeBob SquarePants skin theory. Of course it's a stretch theory. It's gonna be a little bit of a fucking stretch. It's SpongeBob fucking SquarePants. But it gets weirder as it goes along. Now hear me out, right? Salmon reminds me of Splatoon. That's so specific. The, so uh, my my thing is my favorite types of conspiracy theories are ones that make absolutely no fucking sense, and seem stupid and way like way too like out of pocket until you spend too much time looking at them and thinking about them right that's the type of conspiracy theories i like which is why i challenge you to keep with me on this one because yeah this first one you're like okay all right sure we have human costumes and there can be red types of salmon clearly that it doesn't mean that big keep watching i challenge you because this is just the beginning and i want to see where you will come with me on this one because conspiracy theories, I like when they just get worse and more stupid the farther along you watch until it crosses that threshold from stupid to way too stupid. What does your shirt say? It, it's, it says, good at making extremely hot girls come. Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gamer. I'm a, I'm a gamer. <laughs> was a gift from my roommate oh okay then <laughs> it was a gift from my roommate man I, I'm, I'm, I gotta represent it I gotta I gotta represent the gamer shirt <laughs> listen listen this is who I am I was hoping it said gay great at yelling that also would have been a good shirt Mezo, send me one I'll, I'll rep it on stream <laughs> anyways back to this So the salmon suit is a great moment to analyze, but it's only one instance, and one instance isn't enough to support an entire theory. That's why I've compiled dozens of unique moments, all pulled from a variety of episodes which you are about to see. Before that, just keep a few things in mind. First, all the clips you're about to see have been taken from seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4. And as you might know, SpongeBob SquarePants is currently on its 12th season. This will be explored later. Secondly, you're about to see a ton of clips, but it's very possible that even more exist out there which have yet to be discovered. Third, the criteria for what makes something an instance of skin theory is intentionally open-ended. Each one is going to be different from the last. And lastly, as you watch, try not to think of these as individual moments that exist on their own, but rather as connected pieces that all appear in the context of one another, becoming more significant when considered as a whole. Okay, it's it's go. it's an iceberg, you know. <laughs> I can't go anywhere ever again. Stupid, stupid. Some and some of these are better than others. <laughs> wow, it sure is dark in here. This is just weird. Look, Mr. Krabs, I'm you. 
SpongeBob, you're a genius. Well, I'm this was got my point. such a weird so right episode. Off the bat, we got SpongeBob climbing into Mr. Krabs' body. And yeah. this scene might be humorous when viewed on its own, but when you watch the episode again with skin theory in mind, it kind of changes. Yeah. This reference is about as cut and dry as it gets. I mean, he literally wears Mr. Krabs. But believe it or not, this isn't the only time that Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob have switched bodies. Which is a weird sentence. Mr. Krabs, some guy in a suit wants to come in before we open. What? Guy what? in a suit? Watch no! this. It's a tax collector! Hey, there, SpongeBob! Now we like... walk nonchalantly to the rear exit. Huh? He's got a card. R.A. Penny Pincher Vending Supplies. What? My machine has arrived? Like... Oh, let him in, let him in, let him in! They also do it in the episode Skill Crane. Although this time this the This is fucking are weird. Next, we have a moment that comes from one of SpongeBob's all-time classics, No Weenies Allowed. Yeah, okay, Weenie Hut Jr.'s... I had a bowl of nails for breakfast this morning. <laughs> yes, so? Without any milk. Uh, right this way. Sorry to keep you waiting. Welcome to the Salty this... Spittoon. How tough are you? How tough am I? <laughs> wow. Totally funny in, in concept of mine in, in, in SpongeBob. Imagine in the real world. That's what Skin Theory wants you to do. It's, 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 it's really funny. Skin Theory wants you to imagine if the societal norms of SpongeBob were applied to the real world, what it would be like. And in this one... It is the concept. Wow, thanks, Mesa. The, the, this, it's the concept of if the societal norms of this cartoon were applied to the real world, this man is just. Or this man. Sandy has just ripped off a man's tattoo and stuck it back on upside down, which is such a fucking funny concept to me. Got any more tattoos? The deeper we go here, the more examples you're going to see where one character has parts of their skin ripped off and then reapplied as if nothing happened. Granted, if there were only a handful of these weird moments throughout the show, they probably wouldn't be worth mentioning. Right. But as you'll see, there. And that's the thing. And Mezo, counter all you want. I'd, I'm totally down to counter things. There's no such thing as holding up the stream. I'm, nobody's getting held up. You can't reapply your skin. I know this is news to me. But like, if this was just a TV show where that happened a couple times because it's a cartoon and funny things are allowed to happen in cartoons, it would be fine. It's when they start to add up. There are just way too many of them to ignore. Right. For example, it becomes a motif. Me too, SpongeBob. Like this scene. SpongeBob. No splash, SpongeBob. Arms and legs had come off, which is fine. Just his you whole face comes off. He can't treat what the fuck is this? This man has just ripped him in half. Like, it is, it, it, it just, that's fucking weird. Treat us like this anymore. And another one. Right, okay. Feeling better? No. Okay, this is just a band-aid. How about now? Nope. How about now? Uh-uh. And another one. That one was just a band-aid. I don't even count that one. Hi. This one. I am very ugly, but you should enjoy the movie anyway. Her face is burnt off, and she turned to, so to, to dust. So how much that woman's face do you actually think was real? Hopefully none of it, because <laughs> if it was real, then apparently we just saw SpongeBob give a complete stranger third-degree burns. Now that's brutal. Right. Finally, this is a good episode. Is Fun was one of the best I episodes. Win. I win! I win! <laughs> he got away, sir. No! He's finally stolen me sick. I like the way he plops down. Perhaps not, Mr. Krabs. But it's... What? He does that several times throughout the show, where he just rips his skin off to reveal another layer of skin beneath him. Like, it's such a stupid, wild concept that like sure if it showed up a couple of times i wouldn't think about it until it just keeps showing up in the literary world if a, a single idea keeps showing up over and over and over and over and over again we call it a motif and motifs are in a story for a reason talk to emily talk to tess talk to ali talk to any writer you know when a symbol shows up 
in the story over and over and over again. It is called a motif. And when there is a motif, there is a reason. Chekhov's gun? No, no, no. Chekhov's gun is a literary uh, term that we use for if something is shown in a scene, it has to have purpose. Uh, it's called Chekhov's gun because of the concept of if a gun is shown within a scene, it has to go off by the end of the movie. It's the concept that anything that happens on screen has to be important. So you shouldn't just have plot points that pop up and hold no importance by the end of it. Um, so yeah, that's what it is. Thank you, Xander, for knowing the terms. I've got you, L. So in the literary world, when you have motifs, when you have repeated symbols that appear over and over again, that's that's what your literary, like your English teachers are asking you to find. In the Scarlet Letter, what is what does doors represent? And half the time you're like, it's a fucking door. That's what it is. Or if you constantly see characters walking through the door or standing in doorways or resting their hands on doors or or describing doors in extra moments or there's always happens to be a door mentioned in the important moments, maybe it's not just doors. Maybe it's a motif, a repeated symbol that has a deeper meaning. Maybe doors represent opportunity. Maybe doors represent uh, passing from one time of your life to another. Maybe doors represent things being closed in your face and taken away. Maybe doors in Frozen represent that her being locked up in a room and, and feeling trapped by them. And open doors become a threshold. They become opportunity and they become exploration, right? That, that when, a mo when a motif exists, it, uh, Ali exactly with Breaking Bad and Pools. Ali, what exactly do pools represent in, in the Breaking Bad motif? I need coffee for this topic. I'm so glad you're here with me, Mezo. I made myself more coffee because I'm going to need it. I love writing stuff. That's why I'm here. The Sneak Snag is able to watch crime videos and add content because he has a crime degree. I do writing. I'm qualified to teach writing. And I do. I have I have, I have like shit tons of college credits based off of around both creative and educational writing. I can do this for you. Hello, I'm here. So when motifs appear over and over and over again, there has to be a reason, a literary reason why it appears over and over again. If it just shows up, it just shows up. If it shows up to a certain degree, now we've got a problem. Me watching the stream, I'm so I'm so glad your people sitting with me. So SpongeBob rips off all his skin to reveal another identical looking SpongeBob yeah. underneath. Right. So <laughs> this immediately raises two questions. First, uh, why? And second, oh, there we go. Ali says a lot of things. Financial stability, the picturesque suburban family, the American dream. The pools are never used in the traditional sense. Brian said, tainted, contaminated over and over. Right. Ali, uh, Ali explained this one to me because the concept of seeing somebody having like a built in pool in their backyard is like the picture of like the um, like the like she said, the American suburban dream of like the perfect family with the white picket fence and the pool in the backyard and this like perfect like dream of existence but like she said in breaking bad the like, pools are constantly like tainted or contaminated or they have like a, i think you said like dead bodies in them or leaves in them or they're always dirty or like you know they're they're, they're showing like that tainted destroyed like image of the american dream or of the perfect family right that becomes a motif that becomes an important symbolism it's not an accident writers are fucking way too smart my man like writers know what the fuck they're doing Mind, I must say, those are some really nice emotes you got. You're so, that's so true. That's so very true. I've, I've, wait, I've got them too. Wait, hang on. I want to, I can participate. I can, I can participate. I can, I can participate. I'm participating. There you go. I feel like I'm back on English class reading Edgar Allan Poe again. You are. Dead bodies, money, blood, lots of other bodily fluids. Playing thrash debris. Yeah, there's been a lot of things in the pools. Yeah. You don't learn anything from watching YouTube, says my mother. And you, dude, I'll give you a full English class on this shit. Anyways. Second, how can we know that this second version of SpongeBob isn't actually just another layer of skin? How many layers are there? What if he's wearing there? three of those costumes? What if he's wearing four? What if every single time we ever see SpongeBob, he's actually just wearing this costume? Right. In reality, he doesn't even look like this at all. What does he I mean, look there like? There could be anything underneath there. Exactly. What the barnacle is going This is on? such a specific Get away from me. Get away. I could be your ELA teacher technically depending on what grade you're in. Please do not tell me your grade. Do not put your grades in chat. My mods will ban you. Do not put your grades in chat. But depending on what grade you were in, I could technically be your ELA teacher. I am certified. So, 
I, I was actually an English teacher for uh, two semesters, so. What are you talking about, Puff? You can't fool me! You're SpongeBob and that guy who likes the chili. Can we talk about that? Because that's a thing. If we're thinking about this in relation to the real world, humans shed skin and they have multiple layers. Yeah, okay, that's true. But we don't do this. We don't just rip our skin off to reveal a second layer of skin. We shed slowly. I've also been an ELA tutor, technically, but you'd have to pay me for that one. The bread is in the oven. Hopefully, it'll be very good. Ooh, okay. I have to go to my sister's baby shower. I haven't talked to her in years, and I'll be the youngest person there, and she's judgy. You've got this. Just be super confident in yourself. Even if it's false confidence, you still carry yourself. You've got this. Continuing with the theme of tearing someone's skin off, this scene is actually pretty shocking. If you're not familiar with the episode, you might be wondering what could have possibly caused the peaceful <laughs> Mrs. Puff to act in such a violent way. Right. Well, if we just rewind the clip a few seconds, you'll see exactly why. Here it is. Guys, they're back! What's all the hubbub, Puff? They're back! Mrs. Puff, it's, it's us. us! Explain to me. Explain to me. How? How and why? How and why is this the situation that they're able to do? They do not fit in those shapes. That's not how that works. No, Ollie, please. Hang on. At a time, stare at the ceiling while I hold back what's on my. That's what the mask is. <laughs> That's what the point of the mask is. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. Thank you. <laughs> I'm unfollowing. I would deserve it. I would deserve it. <laughs> Ollie, thank you for. <laughs> thank you for the fucking. That was a really good timed joke. Ugh. Oh god. Right. That's why. Oh, because fuck, SpongeBob that's and funny. Patrick literally walked right past her <laughs> moments ago wearing full body skin costumes of prison guards. No, also, not your normal pills. Mine are on my so well. desk. What's all the hubbub, Puff? I had the same damn pills. Oh, this next god. example is one of my favorites, partly because of how much it made me laugh as a kid. And also partly because of how ridiculously absurd it all seems now. <laughs> Man, these patties sure are delicious. I wonder what's in that secret Yeah, formula. okay, so we're back to this clip. Come well, come well. Where a man just takes his head off. Well... Yeah. Everyone at the head enhancement clinic said nobody would notice. Uh. Okay. Is there anyone else in the Spongebob fandom? Man, after this video, I always am. Now, if we just real quick, I'm gonna back up. Listen to what this man says, okay? Tell me what this man says. Everyone at the head enhancement clinic said nobody would notice. What did he just say? What did this fish just say? Everyone at the head enhancement clinic? Head enhancement? Huh? There is a head enhancement clinic in Bikini Bottom? Like, and this reveals back to the second tenant of skin theory, which is that skin theory is hidden from us, not from the, the people in Bikini Bottom. Plastic surgery, this checks out. Mezzo, now you're stretching it. Head enhancement is not plastic surgery, and you can't take someone's plastic surgery off like a mask. This is just a whole head of on, on top of a person. I don't know why we're searching for SpongeBob logic. We're not searching for SpongeBob logic. We're, we're drawing a thread between several different connections and trying to find an explanation as to why this motif is present. Like like blood in the pools in, in, in uh, Breaking Bad. We're trying to find what is this motif. <laughs> They're walking clickbait. Scooby-Doo. This is the end of the mystery. 
Well, well, if it isn't our old friend... Ah, uh, shout out to the break. old Scooby-Doo. Seriously, this moment is so abrupt and absurd. It leaves me Head prosthetic? Dumbfounded. Right. I mean, I love it. I think it's hilarious. But it leaves me dumbfounded. Let's consider the language he uses here. Yeah. Everyone at the head enhancement clinic said nobody would notice. Yeah. The head enhancement clinic. Right. Really? The head enhancement clinic? Wouldn't it have been easier for him to have just said the costume store or the mask shop? And if it's a debatable, I'm guessing he meant detachable head. This is very similar to a toupee. Mazo. Mazo, I'm going to fight you on this one, my man. My man, my bro. How is a toupee, a false set of hair, at all similar to an entire functioning, working, detachable head? That's my question. Because this man was blinking and talking and eating. This was like a full head. This isn't like hair. It's a head prosthetic. And like he said, it could, he could have said a costume shop or the mask shop. No, this is a clinic, like a medical clinic. No, for some reason, the writers decided that he would specifically reference something called the Head Enhancement Clinic, which is apparently a real place that exists somewhere in Bikini Bottom. That's insane. So you're telling me that body modification at a surgical level is so common for undersea creatures in SpongeBob SquarePants that they actually have a fully dedicated standalone medical clinic for handling it. Yep. Really? Yeah. But even then, it's not a full body modification clinic. It's specifically a head enhancement clinic. Right. So they only deal with heads? What right. about all the other body parts? Doesn't this imply that there must be other clinics out there too, which cater to things like hands, feet, torsos, etc.? Right. It Can does. you go to the and torso proof shop? For that too. Just look at this guy again. He has to have visited at least a few of those other clinics too. Right. Because the color of his arms is totally different from the color of his actual skin. Uh huh. They aren't even close. So not only is the head fake, but so is his entire body. This man's like in a mech do you think suit. This guy has had? And how many clinics do you think Bikini Bottom has? Well, I like it. Let's do it again. This is a good episode. Okay. It is for fun. Thank you all the flowers. You wish for you, Kalei. And it's my nose picking, sharing. I'm inside, licking here with my best party. Wait, did you catch that? Yeah. Look at this nose shop. SpongeBob utilizes reoccurring motifs of skin removal to demonstrate the insignificance of our physical form in comparison to our soul, which persists unaffected even when our bodies are no longer intact. Ali, you're my favorite. You are you are my you are my absolute favorite. I love I love hearing your your motifs. Well, if I'm gonna the phone work with me, no, Mazel, your phone is working against you. But yeah, look, it says noses out there. Now this, Mezo, Mezo, if you're with me here, now this would be far more in tune with the concept of plastic surgery, right? Maybe not to this exact degree, it's very exaggerated, but when he said nose picking, he meant going to the store and picking out a new nose, right? At a nose clinic. We've seen the head enhancement clinic, now we're at a nose clinic. And they're not, they're not like saying like, oh yeah, this is how I want my nose to be shaped. These, this is picking out a new nose from a glass case of them to, to, to have, right? Except these are fucking human noses. And Oblivion immediately caught on with me. These are fucking human noses. These are not fish noses. There is not a single person in Bikini Bottom with a nose that looks like this. What, what kind of nose shop is this? And there is only one episode I've ever seen with a nose similar to this. And I believe he references it right after this or in a later part of the video where the only time I've seen somebody get a nose like this is the episode where uh, Patrick gets a, a new nose and can suddenly smell things like a working fixable nose. Their theory broken. Mezo, what did you say? You Anything you messaged before you just said their theory broken didn't send so it's like you were just like silent. You're like, phone, work with me for a moment. And then just went there. Theory broken. Theory theory over. I, I showed them. <laughs> I'm sure you, you had something great for me, man. <laughs> but yeah, this would be a lot more in, in line with the concept of maybe there's some type of, you know, uh, maybe some type of plastic surgery going on. But this is not how plastic surgery works. You don't get a nose attached. 
Do they seriously sell severed human noses? Right. I mean, these things aren't even fish noses. They clearly belong on a human being. So why does this shop exist? And notice how the show only stays on this image for a fraction of a second. That's incredibly quick. Maybe they're flashing it by you so fast because if they linger on it, and the audience really gets to think about what they're seeing. I got a nose job and that's how it is. You just pick from a lineup. They put it in a little bag and you take it home. That's so Chirali, you're right. People will start asking questions. Daddy, wait. Victory is yours. I knew you'd come to your senses. Build a boob, no pick a nose. <laughs> Novelty toy? What fucking working tongue is sold as a novelty toy? And where can I get one? Speaking of shops that sell body parts, SpongeBob was able to find a fake tongue that not only looks and feels real, but is apparently functional enough to allow him to speak perfectly while it's in his mouth. Right. Nice. Right. Anyone can be a big shot in a hick town like Bikini Bottom. <laughs> oh, is that so? Squillium. Let's hear what you've accomplished since high school, Squiddy. Don't be intimidated, Squidward. <laughs> Try to imagine him in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot. Oh no, he's hot. Wait. Like... I'm not typing everything I just did for the third time. Mezo, no, please copy and paste it or take a screenshot of it and send it to me, like send it to me on Discord. I want to know. I'll stay silent. Twitch doesn't want me to speak facts. Twitch, Twitch is, is fucking silencing you and I don't know why, but I, I need you to send this. I need to know what you're trying to break. Screenshot it or something and send it to me on Discord. I need, I need to know the theory breaking thing. But yeah, this is, I've never seen the actual clip. This is the actual clip. It's just Squidward being gay. This is what Squilliam looks like in his underwear. He has a muscled human torso with fingers. Fucker's got fingers. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning this I break fucking my legs, episode. And every afternoon I break my arms. At night, I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. Oh, no. No. Yep. Yeah. Lovely. True self-love. Quick, Patrick, let's help him. Careful. Put him down gently. Oh. Poor, <laughs> poor man. If there's anything, anything we can do to help you. There is <laughs> one thing. As you can well imagine, my medical bills are extremely high. But luckily, I'm able to keep myself alive by selling chocolate, chocolate bars. bars. Such nice boys. It does my heart good to con a couple of class A sucker. And he unzipped his whole out, his whole face. He didn't he didn't just take off the bandages. Mr. Beast. Oh my god. Yeah, you're right. This he didn't just take off the bandages. He unzipped his entire face. So here's my first question. If he's gonna cover up his whole body for this Look. Look. His working his working face. He unzips it and pops up. He what? Bandage disguise. Why doesn't he just use actual bandages and just wrap that around his body? Right. That would look way more convincing and it would probably be a hell of a lot cheaper and easier to find. But no, for some reason, <laughs> this guy just happens to own a full body suit that includes, among other things, functioning eyeballs. Right. And it's customized so to a lot him. Of absurd moments in SpongeBob SquarePants where the show seems to really take a serious dive off the deep end. And usually those moments are hilarious. But right. every fan will agree that one of the most absurd moments of all time has to be the final two minutes from I Had an Accident. Again, if you didn't like the monkey from earlier, this is where the monkey comes back. This is this is the monkey in the hum the human in the monkey suit. In season three. Towards the end of the episode, Sandy and Patrick hatch a ridiculous plan. Don't you have to be stupid somewhere else? Not until four. To lure SpongeBob out of his house by getting Patrick to pose as a violent gorilla. Yeah. This video is over an hour. This video is an hour and 11 minutes long. Billy, you gotta come save me! Hey, Sandy. Who's your friend? But, but you're supposed to be in the gorilla suit. I am, I am in the gorilla, gorilla suit. suit. I, I thought, thought I was, I was doing, doing a pretty, pretty good, good job. job. If you're Patrick, then who's that? Whoop. <laughs> 
This thing. <laughs> Monkey. That thing is so creepy. Man, there are a lot more zipper suits in this show than I remember. That is true. Where There's a lot of zipper them? suits. And how did the gorilla get one that looks exactly like Patrick? Great question. I, mean, I can understand Patrick's gorilla suit because, hey, even people in human society want to dress up like a gorilla sometimes. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah, but no Sparatu. A full body costume of Patrick Star. See, now this is where it gets weird, right? Because, yeah, you can buy human mascot suits, right? You can buy mascot suits, sure. But where can I get a full body zipper suit of someone I know? Like a personalized someone I know skin suit. That's where this starts to fall apart as it's just mascots. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Why does At your local 7-Eleven? Fuck, you're right. Is there a store somewhere that sells exact replica skins of every single citizen of Bikini Bottom that anybody can rent out anytime they like? Honestly, that Man, would so explain your, your a reactions lot. are so oh, good. Oh god, and don't that, even get me started that, on the good real reference. gorilla. I can't even imagine how they came up with this idea in the writers' room. Right. They convinced a real person to put on a full-body gorilla suit yep. and then shoot him in live action with right. voiceover dub. You have to be insane to even think of this stuff. And the immediate logical question that comes up is actually exactly what SpongeBob says next. Shout out to Mezo. You know what I don't understand, though? What? What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? Oh, uh, well, it, it's funny you should... I mean, the, see, the, the, George, they're onto us! Let's get out of here. Fucking what? Can I... Can we talk about that for a second? Can we talk about that? This man, this monkey went from being a monkey to being a human and goes, well, well, uh, but George, they're on to us, hops on a horse, which is clearly two humans in a horse outfit and rides off and, huh? What do you mean they're on to us? What undercover secrecy is happening? Why is there a horse that's clearly two humans? And what are they doing underwater? And then they want to go full meta on us. Zoom all the way out and show us that there are people watching this. Huh? How far are out into the meta of this are we trying to go? Absurdism? So true. Side note, the voice for the gorilla in this episode is actually renowned voice actor Frank Welker. If that name doesn't sound familiar, don't worry, you definitely know him. In fact, you've already heard his voice in this exact video. Yeah. Hey, listen to this, gang. Is that weird? The voice for the gorilla? Teenage sleuths solve boat hijacking mystery. That's right. Fred. Fred. Well, I'd say check on him if it weren't for the fact that we were warned to stay in our rooms. Frank Welker has been the voice of Fred <laughs> Jones in nearly every single animated version of Scooby-Doo since 1969. So the guy who is constantly pulling weird masks off of costumed monsters is actually the voice of the costumed monster. This mo Do you see how meta this goes? They got the voice specifically for the guy who normally takes the masks off of the monster and got him to play the masked monster or the masked monkey in this case. This might be the single greatest stroke of irony that has ever been written. Mezo, Mezo, were you here to see that? Were you here to see how good this is? They got the voice of Fred Jones to play the voice of the monkey. Fred Jones as in the fucking Scooby-Doo. As in the guy who takes the masks off of the people got to play the people who is the mask. It is, it is metatextual irony. It's so good. Would it be too crazy to think it's that this so might be the writer's good. way of hinting at skin theory? Perhaps. Anyway, forget the gorilla. What is a horse doing underwater? Right. You know what would be crazy? What if the voice actor for George the horse was also somehow related to skin theory? 
Now that would be cool. Wouldn't that be but weird? There's no way that the writers would have added two insanely deep ironic references. Right. Right? Right. <laughs> Wrong. Of course they did. Of course they did. George the Horse is voiced by none other than D. Bradley Baker. Okay. Another renowned voice actor who is known for, among other things, portraying one particular role on American Dad. Hey, I have an idea. You could put my brain back into a human body. The horse, human, underwater in the fish show, is the voice actor. And I could get a job of a and fish. Earn some money for the family. Klaus. Ta da! The talking fish. The talking <laughs> fish. Are you kidding me? First it's Fred, and now it's Klaus in the same scene. How many levels of irony were these writers on when they made this episode? These people, I don't even care how many levels of irony. The levels of absolute fucking crack. Coincidence? My fucking ass, Mezzo. No, no, not slash mad. I'm slash lighthearted on all of this. My fucking left titty that this is coincidence that they got these people together in the same goddamn room. There is so much crack in this. Good. Seriously, this is the kind of thing you should point to when people say it's just a kid show. There are no double meanings or there deep messages. There are always These double meta meanings. These references are real, and they I were love light meta years references. Ahead of time. These writers might very well have been like, clinically insane, but they were genius. I love and it. What happens when you combine genius writers with meta textual references and pure insanity? I'm having a hard time believing these connections. They're all kind of reaching. Yeah, it's a SpongeBob fucking theory. They're all going to be reaching. That's the point. It's, this is all fucking, uh, this is all stretch conspiracy. All of it. The entire thing. Skin theory. That's the whole point. Genius writers, metatextual references, and pure insanity. Of course, it's all fucking stupid. Play, play, play my game with me. Ah, Matt Ray! No need to be alarmed, SpongeBob. Your teachings have transformed me. Besides, I... Have checks with little poodles on them. Little poodles on them. I love SpongeBob as a show. Farewell, fellow Not spoon people. theory, skin theory. Bye, Man Ray. Man Ray takes off his head and walks away. Okay, I guess he could get a pass here because he's supposed to be some kind of mutated supervillain. I thought you were dying on this hill. I the the only hill I'm dying on is that anything can be a conspiracy theory if you add enough fucking insanity to it and draw enough connections. And those are the conspiracy theories that I have a lot of fun with. Fine, whatever, sure. But Patrick for my first conspiracy reaction, I thought I'd not do something that was like super, super deep and meaningful. And I thought I would just pl play skin theory with me. Trick isn't. Just, not I'm just, just here to play magic. games. You're also my pal. <sighs> Patrick, say something, Patrick. Hi, SpongeBob. Patrick, you're back. In this episode, the entire <laughs> upper section of his head is removed, at least yep. twice, and then replaced with various non-biological pieces. No problem. Compared yep. to other kids' shows, these kinds of moments are unusually frequent. Yeah, and they don't cover that episode nearly enough, Crystal. Um, they, they do cover that a little bit, but the, in that episode, they constantly take off Patrick's head and put on new versions of that make his brain work differently. Like they put on a new version of the top of his head, which makes him smart and intelligent and then pop it back off and put it back on. I'm sorry, but why do you sound like Philza talking about Aladdin? Like there's literally a scene in My Little Pony where Pinkie Pie had a skin suit of Fluttershy. I mean, I get it, but still, right, right. There's an episode though. There's an episode. It's when things are repeated over and over and over and over again that motifs begin to matter. It doesn't matter until it's a motif. I stand by that one. What can I get you, boy? Okay. So for this one specifically, he's gonna ask us to turn back to tenant number tenant number three, right? Which is very specifically the concept of if this was, or sorry, tenant number one. If this were to happen in a normal society, yes, I know this is a TV show, in which case TV shows are funny, right? But if this were to happen in normal society, this man just ripped off the facial features of two people and replaced them in the wrong place. 
in a meta textual sense like in the sense of like is this acceptable in society this is wild <laughs> what are you looking at those first of all that's a fantastic pun it's quality a, yeah second these moments are strange on their own but something else to notice is they didn't have to reset patrick is just totally unfazed when they see this stuff happening. Yep. Like the two squids don't even react. They just had the features of their faces sucked cleanly off and then reattached to somebody different. Right. Is this just a regular occurrence for them? Is this just something people do to each other down here? This is just a casual I mean, gaff. Everyone is wearing skins and everybody knows that everybody else is wearing skins. Why not? That's the important part. Remember how it's it's hidden from us and not from them. Which means ripping someone's tattoo off and putting it back on or sucking off someone's eyes and putting them back on someone else wouldn't be a big deal if you are aware that everyone's wearing costumes. Well, it sounds like it's all your fault. Oh, you're right. Mrs. Puff's in jail and it's all because of me. I'm such a barnacle head. Poor Mrs. Puff. I what? Oh, I gotta get her out. But to get her out of jail, first we gotta get in jail. How are we going to do that? I can't be the only one who thought those dots were a part of his body. I definitely thought those dots were a part of his body. And why include it? That's my question. As a writer, as 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 a, like, a, an animator, everything. Well, it has nothing to do with the episode. You know what I mean? But apparently not. Maybe they have Velcro on the back? And if you can do that to one of his dots, doesn't that mean he can do that to all of them? Right. Um, you checked out of the hospital this morning. Here's the bell. You mean, I'm awake? Ah! Hey. Why? Mr. Krabs rips his entire head in half, then reforms it multiple times. Multiple Just times. Just pause for a second and try to imagine this scene occurring in pretty much any other children's cartoon show from the era. Can you imagine how disgusting this would look if Timmy Turner just ripped his face off in the middle of an episode of Fairly Odd Parents? Right. That kind of imagery does not fly. Think of it this way. Your parent is confused about how you're mean to your lengths. Normal for kids, but weird for adults. Yeah. That That's a great way to think about it. Like, this is, this is like, what's, what's wild. It's like, even if you think of it in other cartoons... If t yeah, like you said, if Timmy Turner had ripped his face in half several times and regrew it, it never would have flown. Like with like TV shows of that time, like there's like Amazing World of Gumball and shit where that shit happens all the time now. But like, it just the general day to day like cartoons that just doesn't happen. That's not something that they did. But SpongeBob gets away with it all the time. SpongeBob gets away with it constantly. Yeah, all of Patrick's fucking limbs fly off on this one, and SpongeBob's entire bottom half shatters. She's gone. She's gone on fire. He's on fire. Doesn't care. That's just. Uh, I can explain. That's just the thing. This one obviously isn't that serious of an example, but it does illustrate something weird. The fish here seem to be constantly wearing full body costumes underneath their regular clothes. Right. Even when they're skiing. That's a little weird. Yeah, I don't even know if there's going to be theories for something like Amazing Gumball because like I think that show is shock humor for the fun point of shock humor and very little of it has through lines, but I'm sure there's definitely theories of stuff like that. It's just that SpongeBob wasn't really a like shock humor thing like Gumball is, which is why like the 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 skin the consistency of skin humor is so odd you know what i mean why did you follow me in here why uh all right mrs puff it looks like this heat's gone to your head if you're gonna talk to rocks i guess it's time for you to go on kitchen duty yes it, it must be the heat yes darn it okay patrick let's get out of here no way there goes our deposit on these costumes huh there goes our deposit on these costumes. Like, oh, so there is a store somewhere in Bikini Bottom that lets people rent out various costumes which are modeled after other citizens. This is the same show that brings the concept of fire underwater. Yes, but that's also because if we remember, the, the, the point is that it doesn't actually matter that they're underwater in until they acknowledge that it does. That is super common cartoon logic. 
that happens in most old style cartoons, which is the 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 entire point of um in cartoons the the situation that is happening around you doesn't actually exist in a serious context until it's acknowledged in a serious context you know what i mean like 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 it's like like uh with a cartoon person runs and they keep running and they run off the edge of a cliff they can keep running in the air unless they look down and acknowledge that they are no longer standing on a cliff and then will proceed to fall and you'll actually notice that in spongebob as well where they will be breathing normally in a situation until they acknowledge that they shouldn't be able to breathe and then suddenly are choking. Same thing with the fire. They will be on fire until they acknowledge, hang on, how are we having a fire underwater? And then immediately the fire will go out. That is a concept of cartoon logic that has been around in forever that is just don't acknowledge it and it won't have to become real. The moment you acknowledge the logistical situation that you are placed in, that is when logic clicks back into place. That, that, that's a through line of all cartoons. That's been cartoon logic for since the beginning of time. Uh, Tom and Jerry cartoons uh, and uh, Roadrunner cartoons and all of those old style cartoons would not acknowledge the realities of logic until they were acknowledged within like the meta situation. I can't see the theory the same way as you. I do apologize. Please forgive me. I'm not mad at you, Mazel. I, I have good doing a little bit of razzin. There's a scene in this show that makes a gag at pool floats where the daughter flies away due to the water. Yeah, it's, it's that's the whole concept. I'm very delayed. Sorry. No worries. Tom and Jerry isn't that old. I don't. I didn't mean like Tom and Jerry was the beginning of time. I meant the beginning of time, comma. Let me talk about some th other con like some other cartoons I have seen that have that. I know Tom and Jerry was not the beginning of time. <laughs> I, it was more of just it, it's always been a thing. And also these are other cartoons I know that reference it. I, I didn't mean to make it seem like Tom and Jerry was the first cartoon. That is, that's, that's where cartoons began. Where else could SpongeBob and Patrick have gotten these rock costumes that perfectly match their individual skin tones? <laughs> this is probably also where that con man got his bandage costume and where that gorilla got his Patrick costume. So, you've seen a lot of clips so far, but if you still think that these are just totally normal, everyday coincidences that you'd find in any old TV show, right. what will it take? What yes. will it take to convince you that maybe something weird is what going on? What will it take, Mazo? Here, Perhaps here. these small, isolated examples just aren't enough. Right. And you're looking for something singular and concrete. Okay. Something solidly connected to the actual plot. I can provide that. That would be nice, but surely there aren't any examples of that. Well. Right? <laughs> Wrong! Now, this is a top-tier episode of SpongeBob. There we it's go. It's got some of the best one-liners and visual gags in the history of It's a of really SpongeBob. good episode, if but you remember. But it also has complicated and nuanced intellectual humor, like... All right, Pinhead, <laughs> your time is up. Who you call him Pinhead? As a side note, this isn't the only time Pinhead Patrick makes an appearance. It is true. There's also this scene from the Doodle Bob episode. Where he becomes Pinhead. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Patrick? Finland! <laughs> okay, I'm about to go on a tangent, so let's bring it back on top. Survival okay. of the Idiots. There are a couple small instances of skin theory in this episode, such as this. Screaming will get you no- Right, ripped off his head again. Super normal. And this. I'm so c c cold that I'm shivering. And pieces of the skin break off. too. The main conflict is pretty simple. SpongeBob and Patrick are trapped inside the tree dome during winter, and they need to find a way to get warm. Now, there are plenty of ways that they could have solved this problem, but what did they end up doing? That's right. They decided to rip all of Sandy's fur off her body yep. and wear it. That is what they decided <laughs> to do. Theory. But wait, there's more. Do you remember how the episode actually ends? I'm talking about the final 10 seconds or so, the very last joke of the episode. True SpongeBob fans will remember this one. Yep. SpongeBob Patrick. If you want to identify yourself as a true SpongeBob fan, how does this episode end? Shout out to the real SpongeBob fans in chat. How does this episode actually end? I'm gonna be honest, this episode was so scary. That is honestly, this that episode was that that episode had such like it was like a tension fear. It wasn't like a like, oh my god, like a scare fear. It was like a like a casual tension the entire time that was just like Ugh. the type of mo the type of mofo that says you too when the waiter says enjoy your meal i will admit i've definitely done it before but not in a very long time 
I definitely did that as 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 a young teen in my desperately trying to be a human and failing desperately at it. But I, I get you. But anyways. Don't worry, Sandy. We've got you covered. <laughs> Literally, got you covered. <laughs> More lemonade, boys. Thanks, Thanks Sandy. Sandy. She puts them on. She wears the motherfuckers. Green shirt. Lovely. That's how the episode she ends. She wears them. She actually wears them. That's wild. It's... Why does this show have so many references to fish that are wearing other fish? She just puts them oh, on that like wasn't clothes. Even the final example, by the way. Not even close. There are a bunch more. And yeah. lucky for us, I saved some of the best and most bizarre moments for life. <laughs> what the hell? I know. This. Some of these are just some fucking are weird. Late on Sunday. Yeah, we're going back to the male fish. Hi, male fish. Which, funny enough, isn't a male on his third layer. Ta-da! I don't think I even need to say anything about this. There, yeah, I mean, I... just just look at it. The more times you watch it, the less sense it makes. This has it absolutely just doesn't nothing make... to do with the plot, and even when you consider it on its own, it's it... not even really that humorous. It's just weird. It's just kind of there. Right. I mean, I guess it's a little funny, mainly because of how random it is, but even then, the show just kind of hits you with it out of nowhere, and then, and then moves, moves on. on to something else. Doesn't get much more bizarre than that. It just doesn't make. Oh, but it, it does. Oh, it, it does. Always does. It always gets weirder. Oh yeah, I was a teenage this whole Gary. Episode is just weird all around. I remember seeing it sometimes as a kid, but way more rarely than the other episodes from season one. I imagine it had something to do with this hideous mess of SpongeBob shaped like a snail. Meow. I hated this episode. Meow. Meow. Yeah, that snail monster is pretty disturbing. I don't like that's it. That's not even close to how disturbing this guy is yep i'd be shocked if you even remember him after all he only appeared for like 30 seconds in the middle of the episode i hated this episode this episode was so fucking creepy supposedly he's a pet doctor that comes to spongebob's house to give gary an injection of snail plasma so you might be asking what's so bad about that well see for yourself oh no 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 i'm too squeamish what the hell is this <laughs> What is wrong with his arms? I didn't is even this realize how the that. the animators chose to draw him? I, I swear, I did not edit this. His face is clearly purple, and for the most part, resembles a regular fish. But for some reason, his arms They're just are brown? Human arms. And he has fingers? Why does he have fingers? Why? Why do they do this? There's like, no logical reason that this particular fish should get drawn with fingers. Unless you consider skin theory, of course. Which maybe. In which case, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Anyway, there's also the question of his arms being a completely different color from his face. I mean, they aren't even close. And I'm no professional animator, but there's just <laughs> no way that this can be chalked up to a simple coloring mistake. No. He's either a purple fish who's wearing brown arm covers, or he's a brown fish who's wearing a purple face mask. But then again, what if there was a third option? What if there is? What if, and hear me out, what if he isn't a fish at all? There's where it comes into it. We're going to have to come back to this later. But in the meantime, we've still got one more example to go. This starts to give so, me a gross point, feeling in my stomach. Over two dozen clips from different episodes of SpongeBob that span four whole seasons of the show. Right. No matter how skeptical you might be, you can't deny that these references are unusually frequent. Right. Way above the threshold for any other children's cartoon at the time. There's only one more episode I want to look at before we go into the explanations behind skin. And this is what this is the point. Maybe you're skeptical because a lot of these make sense. It's just a weird through line. It's weird that the main source of humor they come back to over and over and over is the theory of taking off or putting on someone else's skin. Theory. And this one is dedicated to the hardest of hardcore skeptics out there. You might be thinking, these examples are weird, but at the end of the day, they're only individual moments. Right. And I still need something bigger to convince me. Well, I've got so, something bigger to convince you. Perhaps a full episode where the entire plot revolves around fish that are wearing skins? Maybe. But, but then again, there is no episode like that. There's no way that the writers of such a beloved children's cartoon would allow something so devious and subversive to make it on TV. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Right? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong! Oh, Muscle yes. Bob Buff Pants. Muscle Bob Buff Pants is another classic from the early days of season one. 
the and entire episode focused the episode around putting head, on skin. You probably know what I'm about to say. Two words. Anchor arms. Yeah, They're this giant, is a good episode. Skin-like appendages that I love this use. episode, admittedly. Seriously, it doesn't get any more black and white than that. The whole episode literally revolves around SpongeBob wearing skin and pretending to be something that he's not. And the funny part is, his trick actually works. The other fish totally buy it, as if these enormous, laughably discolored arms are somehow realistic. Are they actually that dumb? Perhaps. Yeah, what perhaps. if they're actually aware that SpongeBob is using false arms? And they're just not saying anything because it's so normal for people in this society to see other people dressed up in skin. Right. Also, how do anchor arms grow hair? And how do they become veiny? <laughs> Notice how he never mentions the actual material that these things are made of. So what are they made of? What are what they? These things are made of actual skin. At this point, that's I a gross use. concept. Admittedly, I but really wait, hate let's that go idea. Back to that television commercial. There's something about it that might actually be more bizarre than anything you've seen thus far. I'll play the whole thing again, so watch carefully and see if you can find what I'm talking about. Watch carefully, chat. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Hey! Hey, you! Whippy, whippy, whippy. Ooh, I'm, I'm gonna go. No worries. Have a good night. Are you too much of a whip to work out? Are you a weakling? Too yes. Much a I am a weakling. Well, now you too can have muscles. Mm -hmm. With anchor arms! They slip on like a glove. Just add air. Ta -da. How big do you want them? Normal, baby, and for the ladies. Harry. Why for the ladies? I don't know. I was a whip before anchor arms. Now I'm a jerk and everybody loves me. So order now, whip. Wow. Did you catch it? Did you catch the weird part? Did you catch the part of that that's really fucking funky? Did you catch the before photo? Did you catch it? Right here. Who is this supposed to be exactly? Are you telling me that this shark <laughs> used to look like this? Right. How? There are so many things wrong with this transformation, I could make an itemized <laughs> list. In fact, I think I will. Number one, his skin color inexplicably changed from dark green to light gray. Right. How did Anchor Arms do that? Second, his stature and size are completely different. Yeah. Are you telling me that Anchor Arms straightened out his bad posture and added 50 pounds? Possibly. Where did those pecs and those abs come from? Are they fake too? Possibly. If they are, why aren't they the same fleshy color as the Anchor Arms? Great question. Third, his eyes seem to have mysteriously shifted onto either side of his face. Uh -huh. And his vision is perfect now. No need for glasses. Fourth, why do his teeth look like they've been filed down to points? Fifth, and this one really, really freaks me out. He has fingers all of a sudden. Yeah. Where did these hands come from? He just doesn't. How much body modification did this guy have? Forget about the head enhancement clinic. He must have visited a hundred different clinics right. to get all this surgery done. Maybe his oh entire body is some kind of anchor arms type suit. Because he's supposed to be... He's, okay, he's getting done, veneers. That's so There's true. There's only one more instance left on the list. He's, on, he's in the, the process. Episode, muscle Bob Buff Pants. Before the idea of anchor arms is even mentioned, we see this. Howdy, SpongeBob. How's it going? Not too close, Sandy. He looks like his I mouth is on his neck, that. too. Yeah, right? It moved. Check it out. Well, you're smelly. All thanks it's... to my state-of-the-art weight set. It's the baby uh, set. I don't want to disappoint you, SpongeBob, but you won't see any progress with those. the original oh, cyberpunk. That is, you want arms like these, huh? Or these? Right. Pretty or normal. These? Well, Sandy has an incredibly muscular human arm. There's no way you can tell me that came from a. Sport. Why? No shot. That actually looks like it belongs to a body. That is a human arm. That is a squirrel with a human arm. Why? Why does this show feel the need to consistently give its cartoon characters green screened on realistic human appendages over and over again? So how did it get there? Why? Well, when you consider skin theory, the explanation is actually pretty simple. Sandy didn't simply pull up the sleeve of her scuba suit. She actually pulled up the sleeve of her squirrel costume. Exactly. Sandy the squirrel isn't a squirrel at all. She's not a squirrel. Okay.
So those are all the instances they're going to show us. And now we've got the sub theories as to what exactly could be going on in said skin theory. If you guys have any of your own theories, feel free to give them. And or now that you've seen all the instances, what do you think? Is this complete bullshit? Is this stupid? Are, are people just drawing funny little goofy lines in a funny little goofy show? Or, or you know, is it fun to possibly think that maybe the writers are like, maybe if we include enough of these people, will start to think it's a bit weird. Maybe it was just an inside joke in the show. Maybe the writers just had an inside joke and now we've accidentally found the inside joke. Or maybe this is just all coincidental and it meant nothing. But see, now, now that's the question. Here's the sub theories. After seeing everything you've just seen, you probably have even more questions than when we began. Why are there so many instances of fish wearing the skins of other fish? Right. What are these skin costumes actually made of? Why Great does question. everyone bikini bottom seem perfectly okay with these bizarre moments? Right. How many of the fish are involved in this conspiracy? All and of them. And what do the fish actually look like underneath their hidden layers? Nobody knows. Do the fish even exist at all? No. And what kind of madman would write a children's TV show with so many disturbing undertones? What does it all mean? What does it mean? Well, skin theory is a work in progress, so a lot of these questions are actually still being debated right now. It's true. But let's talk about three different sub-theories that can each explain skin theory in a different way. You might find that some of these ideas actually answer more questions than you realize. <laughs> the ritual aspect. So why are the fish in Bikini Bottom constantly wearing costumes and pretending to be things that they're fat. not? My balls are fat. Maybe My balls are fat. Maybe we... Hello. Despite his criminal <laughs> mind, this man is behaving well. Canoe time. His reward is the canoe. This time he can sit in the canoe for up to an hour. D. Thank you, Ash, for my canoe time. An honor to have it. Thank you. I will use my canoe time. We can answer this question by looking inwards and thinking about the various reasons that people wear masks and dress up in human society. Right. Well, the most common reason nowadays is for entertainment purposes, like putting on plays or for holiday traditions, like trick-or-treating on Halloween. Right. But for most of human history, this was not the case. In ancient times and amongst native tribal communities, Masks and costumes have traditionally been worn for religious reasons. Now, the exact reasons behind this are wildly diverse and specific to each culture, but there are some common themes, one of the most <laughs> popular being to represent powerful gods or local deities. Right. The spirits are channeled down to a physical location and communicated with in an They would wear to masks favor. to represent Both gods. These rituals are usually dedicated to specific spirits within a localized pantheon, not just widespread deities like Buddha or right. Jesus. Small, and again, there small is a lot deities. of variation here among many human civilizations. I goose. But usually these worship deities are supernatural entities with specific geographic ties to a location, who have specific days in the calendar dedicated right. to their worship, and who possess significant powers to do either great You would good wear a mask to represent bad, a local deity. Supposed to represent. Masks have also been used to symbolize deceased relatives, allowing those in attendance to communicate with their loved ones from the afterlife. Right. And one more reason that early human culture used ritual costumes was to teach lessons and record history through choreographed reenactments. So entertainment there are countless purposes. countless examples of people in ancient Greek or Roman society who would completely change Which their appearance those are for these purposes. Which literally haunting Sometimes to look transforming at. transforming themselves into a different gender, a different race, or even a non-human animal. So is it possible that the denizens of Bikini Bottom are actually engaged in a bunch of complex social rituals? It's certainly possible, but then again, what kind of rituals are they performing? Right. This sub-theory suggests not the deceased relatives approach or the teaching through history route, but rather the practice of God worshipping. God and you worshipping. Must be thinking, That's insane. There are no gods in Bikini Bottom. Right. There isn't a single mention There's of no religion, religion or spirituality in SpongeBob. anywhere within the whole show. And you'd almost be right. Almost. almost. Hey, look, it's my brand. Guys, hi. Hi there, it's my brand. I'm almost. Xander. Almost Xander. Fish died. Fish Jesus died for their fish sins. You're so true. Enter the Flying Dutchman. Aha. Uh -huh. so what is the Flying Dutchman exactly? Let's listen to Mr. Krabs explain him in the season one episode, Scaredy Pants. Right. Is it a true story? True is the deep blue. Okay, maybe just a little. Have a seat, me boy. <laughs> Every year. Another underwater fire, but as long as they don't mention it, it can stay burning. What would you like for dinner? I haven't had dinner yet. I did have lunch, but I didn't have dinner. I guess my before stream is a, a 
lunch thing. Uh, can I can I have some pasta? On Halloween night, the flying Dutchman descends on Bikini Bottom in a pirate ship, just like this, only bigger. Excuse me, did his ship look like a Krabby Patty? Like I was saying, the <laughs> flying Dutchman swoops down and starts stealing people's souls. Do souls look like pickles? Nah, as a matter of fact, they do. Souls do look like pickles. Never get them. In his soul bag. <laughs> oh. I'm dumb for your pickle. I, I for a, a period of time, was... Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, no. Everybody hold, hold on to your tits for, like, just a second. Hang on. I'm switching over to... I need to, I need to show you something. I need to show you something. Hang on. I need to show you something. Hang on. I need to show you something. Just, 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 just people hop for a second. I just, just, just. <laughs> I used to sell stickers on Redbubble. Right? I used to, I used to sell stickers on Redbubble. Um. Uh, and, and. And, and, and. God, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm trying so hard to pull this up right now. I designed a sticker. I had... Oh God, hang on. Wait. I really hope this works and doesn't crash, because sometimes it works and sometimes it crashes. Don't crash. Fuck yeah. I, 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 I designed a thing for this. I've designed a thing for this, for this moment in, in Spongebob. Right in in this moment right here, in where it's it's it's, where are we? Wait, pause. Get out of here. Uh, this this moment. I've, I've come, come for, for your pickle. pickle. <laughs> that I've come for your pickle. I I made, I made a, a red bubble stick. <laughs> <laughs> I made this sticker years ago. <laughs> it was so funny to me, and I don't know why. I literally, I laughed so hard making it. I never even put that design up. I, it was too funny, and I liked it too much, and I just, I just never released it to the public. I, I hid it away for no one to ever find. It was just so funny to me. I gotta go. No worries, Scar. Have a good night, mate. But anyway, don't worry about it. It's fine. <sighs> it was so funny. Okay, so what I'm gathering here is that the Flying Dutchman is a supernatural entity, right? Specifically linked to Bikini Bottom, who descends I've upon the town for your... on a no, wait, no, hang on. night and utilizes <laughs> immense otherworldly power to steal the souls of innocent sea creatures. Right. Very interesting. Very specific. So just for the sake of argument, so let's he's a small that time Dutchman deity. Really is a localized demon spirit. Right. Our next question would be, how have human societies approached this problem in the past? Well, there are definitely a lot of civilizations right. to draw from, but one example can be found in Japanese culture, where there are special ceremonies that date back centuries called onai oshiki, whose purpose is to drive out evil demons. Notice how the performers in this ceremony are wearing complex ritual costumes and masks that are meant to resemble demonic spirits. Exactly. Rituals like this one were extremely common in many early civilizations throughout prehistory. So why couldn't that be the case in Bikini Bottom? And notice how multiple characters, including SpongeBob and Squidward, specifically choose to model their costumes after the Flying Dutchman himself. The real Dutchman even says at one point that the reason he showed up that night was because SpongeBob's Dutchman costume was so terrible he <laughs> felt offended. But that's not the reason I'm taking your souls. No, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Out of all the Dutchman costumes I've seen, yours is the most insulting. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's literally, that a he literally was just insulted. Like him would be upset by his followers' poor worship services. A poor In worship Greek service. Mythology, as well as many other cultures, people would work tirelessly to worship their gods in the correct way, fearing terrible retribution if their worship was deemed inadequate. Which we don't, we don't ascribe too much anymore. But yeah, in the old pantheon practice, like there was a very correct way to 
worship a god and if you worshiped the god in an incorrect way you would receive their wrath and it's not really uh like followed as much anymore but that that really was the way to do it and so if the flying dutchman was a local deity the dutchman's anger could we're literally be writing religion into spongebob right now so how believable is the ritual aspect overall well, well it certainly adds an interesting new dimension to the mix and its anthropological comparisons are fascinating but considered in the context of all those other examples, it only seems to account for certain instances. It's in a very yeah. isolated moment. It doesn't really so make a whole, whole lot of this sense. just isn't my favorite sub theory. But it's also not the last. Mass psychosis. This one's way fucking weirder. Mass psychogenic illness is defined as the rapid spread of illness signs and symptoms affecting members of a cohesive group originating from a nervous system disturbance whereby physical complaints that are exhibited unconsciously have no corresponding organic etiology. In simpler terms, this just means that a large group of people goes completely insane at the same time, in the same way, and with no real physical explanation. Does anybody know about the meowing nuns? Does, does anybody know about the mass psychosis of the meowing nuns, where like an entire like, an entire like collection of nuns just began meowing? Yeah, we know about the meowing nuns. Small duty you used your left food when you were supposed to use your right. Your subscription to life has been canceled. So true. At face value, this idea is pretty appealing because it recognizes the fact that the instances of skin theory are wildly diverse. And instead of trying to find a single common thread that logically connects them together and explains right. why the fish are wearing It just each says they're skins, all crazy. It provides the simple answer that they're just completely insane. They've all gone batshit. Real-world examples of mass psychosis are pretty rare throughout history, but there have been a few documented cases, like one instance in 15th uh, century they, France did you talk about the meowing nuns. nuns reportedly began to meow like cats yeah. and would not speak any actual words for several days. That is a thing. There was also the Tanganyika laughing epidemic of 1969, where upwards of 1,000 schoolchildren began laughing uncontrollably, which lasted for months. In both Months. instances, no physical cause or logical reason ever really presented itself. So mass psychosis was used to explain the behavior. Is it possible That's that just SpongeBob wild. and his undersea friends yeah, the have dancing is also one. this strange and dangerous phenomenon? Well, inexplicable bouts of total insanity have been a recurring theme throughout the show's history since the beginning. Which is true. Chocolate! 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 69? Chocolate! Nice. Chocolate! Chocolate! If the fish are just this insanity. prone to complete psychotic breaks with reality, why couldn't they have one that prompts them to wear costumes of each other? But for the disease They're just constantly to on the verge of bottom, sanity. There would probably need to have been a seriously traumatic event that acted as a catalyst. So what could have possibly happened that would cause this? Maybe there was some kind of mutation that spread throughout the population. A neurological disease which affects the mind could have come from any number of things. Right. Perhaps an unknown parasite or an experiment gone horribly wrong. Then again, they might also have been affected by severe pollution. Think about how destructive yeah. an industrial oil spill or radioactive waste can be to local sea life. That's super true. Those are some ugly looking fish. Maybe we're near one of those toxic waste dumps. I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> and this one's my least favorite. I hate this one. It makes me so creeped out. Finally, there's one more sub theory that needs to be discussed. This is the sub theory I don't the like. Oldest of them all. It's also the most comprehensive account for skin theory, meaning that it can be used to explain almost every single instance of skin theory we've discussed so far. Right. And on top of that, it can even be used to make sense of other background inconsistencies that have nothing to do with skin theory, but have nonetheless plagued this show since episode one. But they make this sense. This is the costumed human hypothesis. What if the sea creatures of Bikini Bottom aren't actually sea creatures at all? Yep. What if? They're just human beings in fish costumes. They're just people. I know that sounds crazy. What if they're just work, people? Because it gets even crazier. What if they're literally just people? If all the characters are actually human beings in costumes, how can they breathe underwater? Well, they're not underwater. Well, here it comes. The final piece of the puzzle. They aren't underwater. Boom. There is the explanation for everything, Mezo. All of it. Everything you see is a lie. All of it. It's all a lie. 
I like the dramatic now, boom if this effects. Is true, it would completely revolutionize the way we look at SpongeBob SquarePants forever. So let's review some evidence. These are the specific <laughs> moments which most strongly indicate that some kind of human being exists in Bikini Bottom. Right. But all the other clips we saw before are also compatible, with, especially considering that we've already observed fish who are wearing multiple layers at the same time. Meaning they could it's be wearing as many layers as they want. Any one of them could be doing this. So let's break it down. The costumed human hypothesis proposes that every character in SpongeBob SquarePants, big and small, are actually just human beings. They're just humans. Who refer to each other by made-up names and who act out rehearsed situations for the viewer to observe. It's so all a show. they're encountering real problems. They're just acting out situations. It's identical like... to how human actors on a stage aren't actually dealing with the problems in the script. It's their characters that are. Right. So as if SpongeBob was a sitcom where they're actually actors acting out a show. And that's why there are so many references to skin wearing and costumed fish. But what about the claim that they aren't actually underwater? It probably seems ridiculous at first to imagine all this action occurring on dry land. But when you think about it closely, that actually answers a ton of questions that have been plaguing viewers for years. Right. For instance, how can there be fire underwater? This is a fun joke that the show likes to make. And sometimes yeah. they're pretty self-aware, usually turning it into a fourth wall break for comedic effect. Exactly. But at least it's warm around the fire. Hey, if we're underwater, how can there be a... Exactly. I'm scared, SpongeBob. He mentioned now, it and it went away. it's funny, but isn't it easier to just consider that the fire exists because they're on dry land? Right. And here's a good one. If Bikini Bottom is actually underwater, why is everyone stuck to the ground? Have you ever noticed how nobody ever swims upward? The ocean is a three-dimensional space, yeah. and in the real world, life exists on all levels. It's not just limited to the seafloor. This is actually a seriously troubling question to consider. Like, why do SpongeBob characters act like gravity is even a factor at they, all? They shouldn't have the gravity. They should just be able to swim up and down whenever they want to. Because so why water. is everyone inexplicably confined to the ground? Again, this is easily resolved if we consider that they're just people in costumes walking around on dry land. Exactly. Let's they're on a going. set. And we've probably all wondered about this one. How can there be a beach underwater? This one completely defies logic. Well, well there are some semi-official explanations floating around out there. Right. These answers are problematic at best. The most common explanation is that the water in Goo Lagoon is a different density than the water in Bikini right. Bottom. It's a different density. So they separate. Well, first of all, this does absolutely nothing to address the hundreds of other instances in SpongeBob where liquid can be seen in glasses, coming out of hoses, yeah. and even in pools. And even if Goo Lagoon is a different density, the two bodies of water are far too separate and clear-cut to be existing in contact with one another. Right. There's just no good reason that explains why this beach or any other liquids in Bikini Bottom can feasibly exist. And look at this. Now, I will admit, there are rivers and lakes that can occur underwater because there's a different density or they're made from a completely different connection or completely different, like, uh, like you know, combination of liquids. Like, and, and like, that's, that's the whole thing. But it doesn't explain glasses of water, bathtubs, showers, hoses, etc. They made an episode where SpongeBob swings, though, and floats to the surface. If that was done after season four, though, that then it doesn't really if, apply to the skin theory. Skin theory applies to the first four seasons. Yes. Where did this river come from? And wait, what is that guy doing? What is he fishing for? He is a fish. Yeah. How do you make that's, sense That's of a this? good point. Well, consider this. What if Goo Lagoon and all the other water you see in the show is made of real, actual water and everything else is just air? It's just air. And again... This makes perfect sense. One more to consider. Okay, so the show is based around the idea of sentient sea creatures that understand language, wear clothes, and have created a functional society. Exactly. Obviously, none of this exists in real life. So Which the is fine. Are asked it's a cartoon. To spend our disbelief for a bit and essentially just roll with it every yeah. time we watch. And it's that's a fine and all. There's nothing wrong with rolling with an unusual premise if it means you'll enjoy the show more. But if we apply the costumed human hypothesis, this suspension of disbelief is no longer even necessary. There's no need to roll with it because the show isn't scientifically inaccurate anymore. Right. The fish have human characteristics because they are human beings. And it's that simple.
their underwater environment doesn't obey the natural laws of the ocean because, because they're not they underwater underwater honestly we could go on for hours about all the little inconsistencies that appear in this show everybody's noticed them just know that almost every logical problem you can find in spongebob squarepants can be solved by applying some facet of skin theory yeah anyway if the show is entirely comprised of human beings dressed up like fish they sure do a good job of hiding it right other than those few instances we discussed earlier, you never actually Welcome see back, human beings or anything else that positively indicates human beings exist in this world. Hello. Right? <laughs> Wrong! There are actually two characters who have been uh, sitting right under your nose the whole time. The unmasked the fact humans. That they even exist at all is a huge argument to support the costumed human hypothesis. You and you know who they are. About. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Best characters. How could we ever forget about these two? They're just they fucking random human humans. Beings dressed up in costumes. Doesn't it strike you as a little coincidental like, that the only actual people we ever see in this show just happen to be wearing costumes? I mean, forget about all the subtle implications like, and the deep metatextual hints. The show is practically shoving the answer right in your just... face and daring you to connect the dots. Just think about it. None of the other sea creatures ever question what two elderly human beings are doing way down here in Bikini Bottom. They just roll with it. And yeah, see High Diving Season 11? Yeah, those newer seasons don't count towards skin theory because the writers changed. But... This right here, like, this is, this is the weird one. This is the weird one, because this is just a human underwater. And Sandy shows several times that she cannot breathe underwater and she needs her air. Because she's a squirrel. She's a land animal. But these are humans. Humans are land animals. They need to have air. Except clearly not, because they're not underwater. They're just actors on a show but part of Sandy's character is that. Shoot, I gotta go? No worries, Mezo. Have a good night. Also consider this. You never see them without their costumes on. Just like how you never see any of the other characters without their fish costumes on, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are constantly playing their roles. They're acting they are like characters something else. on a show. They're pretending to be something else. They are doing exactly what everyone else is doing. And that's why nobody in Bikini Bottom treats them any differently they're just Honestly, fucking Mermaid old Man men and Barnacle boy might as well be the poster boys for skin theory you couldn't find better evidence if you tried so in conclusion there we Mermaid go man and barnacle boy aren't actually superheroes they're, they're not. just regular people in costumes pretending to be superheroes exactly SpongeBob, patrick squidward and literally everyone else in bikini bottom aren't actually fish they're, they're just, just people. regular people in costumes pretending to be fish and finally, the entire undersea setting of SpongeBob SquarePants is an elaborate illusion. And everything you see is actually occurring on dry land. Everything you know is a lie. So those are the current... It's a lie, subjects. all of it. The show also might be utilizing a mix of all three, so it's not necessary for you to pick a favorite. But after seeing this, you're probably left with a very bizarre sense of confusion and a deep yearning for the answer to one simple question. Why? There it why is. does this exist? If skin theory is true, why, why would the skin writers theory? of the children's cartoon willingly choose to do this to their own show? Well, I didn't create SpongeBob, so I can't personally answer that. We can only interpret what we observe. But we can always speculate, and there's plenty to speculate about. So let's take a step back from the show itself and talk about the real world environment where it was. Let's born. talk about the writers, y'all. Where did this come from? This is the last chunk of it. If you watched the show growing up, you'd probably agree that the original four seasons of SpongeBob were its best. It would I take agree. a very long time and probably a whole new video to explain why those first few seasons were so good, but most people agree that the humor and the dialogue undergoes a significant tonal shift sometime around season four. Some would argue that the changes had already begun by the time season four came out, but for the most part, these episodes are still pretty solid. Maybe not up to the incredible standards of the first three seasons, but still not bad. So, what's so special about the first four seasons of Spongebob? And why do almost all the instances of skin theory just happen to be found during
during the same four seasons when the show was at its critical peak. Right. To answer this, we can only turn to one man. Him. No, not no. the pirate. I'm talking about him. The lips. This mouth. And the man who this mouth belongs to. We're talking about the mouth. Steven Hillenburg. This is Steven the man. Steven Hillenburg was the man who created SpongeBob SquarePants. He was a longtime animator and cartoonist. And before creating SpongeBob sometime around 1997, he previously worked with Nickelodeon as a creative director for Rocco's Modern Life from Another 1993 crazy show. to 1996. Another show known for its absurd and edgy humor. Yeah. Yeah, and let's keep it that way. Oh, oh dear. You all right? Yeah, I'm o I mean... Ah, my neck! My leg! Ah, my leg! My leg! But in addition to Definitely being a celebrated show. cartoonist, Hillenburg was also a teacher and a marine biologist. I'm back and I hate divorces, bro. Ocean. Same. I've been so through after it. Coming up with I know the, the, I know the feeling. And pitching it to Nickelodeon, he Hope acted as head right, writer man. and executive producer on all 60 episodes from seasons 1, 2, and 3. He also Ooh. worked on the SpongeBob movie. But then shows the yes, the, the SpongeBob show movie afterwards in 2002. The SpongeBob movie is Following such a good movie. Hillenburg remained somewhat distant from the show, letting it change and grow in different ways under the creative control of his friend Paul Tippett. But then in 2014, it was reported that Hillenburg would be returning to SpongeBob SquarePants in a creative role, nearly a decade after leaving. This actually ended up coming true, and he directly worked on the production of SpongeBob's second feature-length movie, Sponge Out of Water. Am I the only one who never saw this one? Like, I saw the original Spongebob movie and never cared to see the next. Because that original Spongebob movie was such a work of art. I apologize for yawning, by the way. My body woke me up at 6 a.m. this morning, and it's now 10.30, and my I am just incredibly tired. The movie was received very well by critics, and ultimately made many fans hopeful for what Spongebob's future might hold. Meanwhile, if we look at the timelines, Hillenburg's tenure in charge of SpongeBob lines up perfectly with the show's golden age of seasons one through three. The and best it follows seasons. That his unique creative input might have been the secret ingredient for making SpongeBob so good during those first few seasons. Right. Coincidentally, his departure from the show also marked a sharp decline in the kind of bizarre instances we've been discussing, which all but stopped showing up after season four. There may be occasional references to costumes and skins found throughout seasons 5 through 12, but these are usually far less complex and harder to find. So, was Steven Hillenburg really responsible for the creation of skin theory in SpongeBob? Probably. Before we can answer that, we have to know, what the was hell? he even capable of devising such an elaborate and bizarre message? What a fucking weird looking Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Just look at some of the traits that define SpongeBob's unique style of humor during those first few seasons. Right. The show obviously used a lot of very simple visual gags, but there's also a lot of nuanced humor. Loader. I'm ugly and I'm proud. Loader. I'm ugly and I'm proud. I am ugly and I'm proud. <laughs> I'm ugly and I'm proud. Is that what he calls it? And <laughs> genuinely well-written dialogue. Those uh, homemade pies sure look good. Oh, oh these aren't homemade. homemade. They were made, made in a factory. factory. A, a bomb, bomb factory. factory. They're, They're bombs. bombs. Another trait that defined the best, show during those first few seasons episode. was radical absurdity. Sometimes the humor would be pretty nonsensical, but then other times the show would veer wildly off course into these unbelievable Kafka-esque tangents of experimental filmmaking. I may finally have found a place. This episode is so fucking wild. The time travel episode? Anybody remember this? This this episode felt like a fucking fever dream. Place where I can be all alone. 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 Like what a fucking nightmare. And lastly, we all know about the hidden adult themes in SpongeBob. Yeah. Examples of this can be seen through some pretty simple double meanings and offhand comments. Wow, I didn't think superpowers worked that way. Sure, power's all in the costume. Why else would we run around in colored undies? I can think of three good reasons. Squidward? What the hell? 
but it can also be seen through highly complex extended metaphors which i don't know if he references it in in the dirty references or whatever but anybody else remember the episode where where spongebob was watching something on the tv that was like a squid like move or a, like a some type of like sea urchin like moving around and gary walks in and he switches the channel and he's like i wasn't watching anything like that is like absolutely the concept of spongebob getting caught watching porn spongebob absolutely got caught watching porn by gary which is his cat transform the entire plot of an episode one of the best examples like of this can be seen in the season one episode karate choppers which on the surface appears to be a pretty innocent story of two friends who enjoy practicing martial arts right but when you look at this episode a little closer it actually transforms into a highly provocative and explicit parable of lust and abstinence. What? All this by simply substituting out a few words and recognizing that every reference to karate is actually a clear reference to sex. Oh. In fact, I... Stop. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, that sounded like karate. Right now. I mean... No! What is this karate? Yeah, let that one sink in for a second. That's a little bit of a stretch to, to, to try and say that the karate episode was actually referenced to trying to abstain from lust and sex. Uh, that feels like a stretch. But okay. But Chat, shut up about your damn teeth. Quit it. Quit feeling your teeth. They're supposed to be there. Despite all this, at the end of the day, SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> was a kid show. But the difference was, Hillenberg didn't treat his audience like they were children. He gave them complex jokes. He gave them surreal, truly absurd humor. And he constantly pushed the envelope. Right. This man was never afraid to go out on a limb. And if his jokes went right over the- Uh, content warning for Nosferatu, I believe. If that's- if this, that's what he's gonna show is the Nosferatu image that Ali had mentioned earlier. The audience's head? So what? That makes it even funnier. The, yeah, this one. Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Yeah. So that was that was that was that was yeah. That was an episode. Intentionally created the complex hidden messages and references behind skin theory. I can think of no better candidate in the world. Right. But unfortunately, there will never be any hard answers to these questions. Right. In 2017, Steven Hillenburg was diagnosed with ALS, a neurological disease that affects motor function and muscular control. The news came as a shock, and he passed away shortly thereafter in November of 2018. The loss of Steven Hillenburg was felt by millions of people across the world who had yeah. grown up with his work. For many, this show played a greater role than anything else towards developing their sense of humor into what it is today. My sense it of humor included. hilarious stories, heartfelt moments, and genuine happiness far more than the simple cable entertainment I really loved expected. Spongebob growing Steven up Steven Hillenburg was the man to thank for all of this and immediately the outpouring of support and praises for this wonderful man's life David Hasselhoff just how far reaching and positive of an impact he truly had right and this is the final piece the summary no matter how you judge a show Spongebob Squarepants will always be remembered as one of the greatest television experiences that has ever been aired yeah. It's hilarious. It's quotable. It's relatable. It's emotional. It's deep. No cartoon has ever been able to bridge the gap between youth and adulthood quite like SpongeBob has. And no show probably ever will again. I agree. It's one of the only shows out there that's just as funny, if not even funnier, when you go back and rewatch it with age. Yeah. No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Even on the 10th, the 20th, and the 100th viewing of these episodes. It's still just as good as it was when we tuned in and saw it premiere on Saturday morning. Genuinely. And now, the jokes that we never understood because we were too young suddenly become some of the greatest moments of all time. Right. The little details that we never even noticed before can change our perception of an entire episode. And certain characters who we looked down on or laughed at as children suddenly become relatable and endearing. Just like the location of Bikini Bottom somewhere below the waves off the Pacific coast, the care and attention that went into this show runs incredibly deep. A truly great show should never be pinned down by one official interpretation. It should Agreed. always be challenged, reimagined, and redefined. Skin theory is only one of the fantastic ways that we can look at SpongeBob. So if you think that this whole theory is ridiculous, or maybe if you find it just a bit too disturbing... Ha! That is 
really disturbing. That's okay. <laughs> You're allowed to see the show however you want. Yeah. As long as this video starts a conversation, or maybe even inspires some older fans to sit down and rewatch their favorite episodes, then I consider that to be a huge success. So what do you think? Could it really be possible? And if Pandora's box has finally been opened on critical SpongeBob analysis, what unbelievable theory could come next? But no matter what new evidence is discovered, SpongeBob SquarePants will always be the greatest television show of our generation. And nothing will ever change that. This episode went so hard. And it's sweet, sweet, sweet victory, yeah. <laughs> and it's sweet, sweet, sweet victory. There you go. It, this 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 is the end of it. It rejects all monetization and all of that stuff. No commercial purpose. Um, it's it's just it's just a show. So that is SpongeBob SquarePants skin theory. And SpongeBob the 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 summary he gives at the end is such a good summary of the entire show of just. That show is one of the only cartoons I genuinely watched as a kid, really enjoyed, and would still go back and watch to this day, other than maybe I would go back and watch Fairly Odd Parents, maybe, or like Ed, Ed, and Eddie, but I haven't. I'd say maybe I would go back and watch them, but I haven't gone back and watched them. And I have gone back and rewatched SpongeBob. Actually, when I was in my second year of college, I had some like pretty difficult classes that are like high level like chemistry classes and such and i had a teacher who before our exams we would come in everybody would come in like like for the exams or whatever and she would schedule them extra long my my, my teacher was wild she would schedule them extra long and when you'd show up we would all gather together in in the thing and she would give us like an all right i know you're all stressed like thank you for coming in we are going to watch an episode of Spongebob, and then when you're all done being stressed and chill the fuck out, we'll take our exam. And so we would all just sit down with, like, coffees and shit and watch an episode of Spongebob. And then we would take our exam. We used to have, um, like, de-stress days during final semesters or during, like, final weeks or whatever, where people would get together in the basement of the, the 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 towers that I lived in. There was I lived in like uh several dorms connected through the towers. Um and we would gather in the basement and we would eat like chicken nuggets and mac and cheese that we would all bring in and we would literally draw in coloring books and watch SpongeBob to de stress from finals week. Like the SpongeBob is something I have consistently gone back through again and again throughout my life as just it's timeless. It's it's memorable. It's funny still to this day as a full grown adult. I will still watch these episodes and genuinely laugh because they are still good and they are quotable as fuck. Every single one of you knows at least one like SpongeBob quote in your life. It's like, oh, this means a lot to me. It's just you, me and this brick wall you built between us or, you know, it's it. Yeah. Oh, this wasn't handmade. It was made in a factory, a bomb factory. It's a bomb. Or me and me and roommate all the time will just go, uh -huh, my back. Like that all the time. You'll you'll catch me saying bold and brash more likes belongs in the trash. Roommate has a shirt with the belong the, the bold and brash art on it. Like, no, this is Patrick. Like, SpongeBob has made its way into generations of jokes everywhere. Like, it is amazing what this show has done in persistence. And I don't give a shit 
about like any of the last six seasons like because all of that amazing humor and jokes come from like those first five maybe six seasons at most yeah his mayonnaise an instrument no patrick mayonnaise is not an instrument like there's so much good from that show it is absolutely fucking fantastic if you haven't seen it as a kid or you haven't seen it in years i so genuinely encourage you go watch the damn show for a little bit like go 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 watch some spongebob just for a little bit just spend some time watching some spongebob it's genuinely funny like it's a good time and there are so many like episodes that like like band geeks that is such a good fucking episode. It was like magical. I barely saw it as a kid and haven't watched it since. I'm telling you, man, might watch it then. Go watch the Band Geeks episode. That one's one of the best episodes of SpongeBob there ever was. Go watch FUN, the fun episode. Go watch like um oh Alaskan Bullworm. Go watch the Alaskan Bullworm episode. Like it's a good time, man. Genuinely. I'm on February break right now and I don't want to go back to school. Oh man, I get you. I've been there. Sadly now my 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 tears go for I don't want to go back to work on Monday, but I get you. Work, school, it's all the same pain. One of my core memories uh with one of my favorite episodes is where SpongeBob pretends to be a lifeguard and ends up drowning trying to save Patrick. Yeah. There's just there's just so much good. I am done. My silly little canoe time drawing. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you have finished. I'd love to see some time. However you would like to send it. Um, but yeah. Skin theory. And and this is just one of many stupid conspiracies in the universe that do exist. Um, so, my, my question to all of you little ghosties that are still floating around, despite the fact that we have been live for three hours now. My apologies. I don't know how that has happened. Took us two hours to watch a one hour video. Um, a, this is my first like reaction content I've ever done. So did you have a good time? Did you enjoy it? Do we still want to do that? Um, and number two, if you do ever want me to do reaction content again, suggest what you want me to go through. Like, like, is there other conspiracies you want me to cover? I, I'm very curious to know what conspiracies do you want me to talk about? And if not conspiracies, are there other things you would want? One of the other things I did in uh, when I when I did the beginning mornings for the art channel on Discord. Got you. OK. Um, I enjoyed it, but I enjoy almost anything. <laughs> oh, thank you, Edison. I was fun. I had a good time. Was cool. OK, very glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, when I did the reaction on uh, the subathon, I watched a video based around uh, soft world building and hard world building in writing. And like I said, one of the topics I have the most knowledge on is writing, uh, English, English writing, uh, mostly creative writing. I my roommate is literally a creative writing major. She's graduated from college with a creative writing degree. I've been writing since I was a kid. I have a bunch of college credits into writing. I, I'm qualified to teach English. I have an English second language degree. I studied linguistics for like for my minor like i i know a shit ton about writing um so like if we want to do things about like character design world design magic design plot writing pacing like those kind of things and like creative writing and that kind of shit like i'd be super done to to play uh those kind of videos and react to those and do like little like writing talks and stuff but i think those would also be fun if you are interested good and insightful you should react to tiktoks i could TikToks always make me nervous because like there I can't I physically can't watch them without getting like copyright striked at every single moment. It's there now. It's drawn with a computer mouse. It's not the best. Got it, Ash. Thanks. I'll take it. I'll take a look at it in a minute. All of the conspiracies. OK, make your own crack theories for FNAF. I wish I knew enough about it to do that. I'm doing March Madness and Art Club. There's so much going on there. I remember the first bit of that Google Classroom. Listen. Xander, you would love D&D if you don't already play it. I, I'm i sure I might. Um, I know enough about D&D. I know what it is. I know how to make characters and stuff. It's just something that, like, is very much like, say, like, Terraria. Like, that, like, I feel like 
is so big and I don't know enough about it to get involved and it's a huge time user um and admittedly I don't have enough friends to do it I'm gonna be so real um because if I was gonna play d and I would want to play it in person uh because I I love doing improv in person but there's just so much funny things that can happen in person that I just I'm so sick of interacting on a screen, if that makes sense. Uh, em, like I said, Emily made an art piece about this on a TikTok. Uh, go go watch her TikTok. She made a, a TikTok on the concept of, like, I don't know how to interact with people in person. I only do it through a screen. And as much as I'm, like, I'm sure I could... I know enough people online that I could get people together and we could do some kind of D&D campaign online. But would we? That's the thing that sucks about online bullshit, right? Like... First of all, I have to learn d and I have to learn how the fuck this thing works. But I, would we really do it if we just keep saying we're going to do it and build a, a a Discord server around it and go create your character and we'll we'll teach you how to do it and we'll get in a voice call one of these days and we'll we'll run a campaign. No, no, we'll we'll, we'll get it together one of these days. We just have to find time that everybody's like does it ever really happen? I've joined like 3 D&D campaigns. People keep inviting me and I keep saying yes. And it keeps getting to the point that everybody's like, okay, we have, everybody has to create their characters and like I'll DM and you know, I just got to get set up for like a, a one shot and we'll get, we'll get used to it. And then it never happens because time and time and time again, they're like, okay, everybody give us a day that you can go, yeah, you can do it. And we all give our days and we all talk about it. And we all consider actually doing it. And we all try to find a day that it's going to work. And it never happens. A day is never picked or a, a day is picked. And then you don't, you don't get to actually do like, you know, the day is picked and somebody can't show up or day is picked and then nobody shows up or, you know, it doesn't actually go through or it doesn't work out. And like I said, I've literally joined three, three different D&D campaigns that have gotten all the way to the point of having full set up discord servers and like people preparing their characters. And out of all three of them, never have they actually had a real meeting where we actually got to play. I have never gotten to play D&D. I, I don't know, ma'am. Here's the thing. D&D is complete improv. You learn as you go. There's not rules per se, but there's regulations. Yeah, but there is there is rules. I mean, to a certain degree, at least from what I've learned, like there is a certain amount of like, you, you know, each time you play. But like, it's also it's completely learnable in the moment. I've watched if anybody has watched um, if you if you are a D&D enjoyer and you haven't watched this, there is two episodes um, of Chuckle Sandwich that were done called chuckle dungeon i believe is what it was called um i mean tess is trying and struggling with us i would i would kill to join in. i saw you guys talking about that in the server i would kill to join in but i have this sneaking theory that it's gonna happen again that i'm gonna get excited and be like oh guys can i join and everybody will say yes because you know I, my friends are nice and they care about me usually um and they would let me join in and it would it would it wouldn't end up going anywhere I mean, we started, we killed a it, You guys are actually playing the one chance I get to actually play, and I just am not, am not involved. Okay. The one chance, whatever. It is what it is. Anyways, there's, there's two episodes of Chuckle Sandwich that uh, are called, I believe are called Chuckle Dungeon. Um, and you can go and watch them. And it, both of those are like an event where... Charlie is a he's a master like a dungeon master and he gets the other two he gets Schlatt and fucking Ted Nevison to just play characters they make up their characters on like on the spot kind of thing or, or pre-handed like they kind of like come up with their characters beforehand and they come in and he plays just this wonderful little one shot with them that is it's fantastic and it doesn't make literally any sense and it's lovely and they're like one of them was like entirely burger themed and it was hilarious and like like they didn't know at all what they were doing, but Charlie was, like, super easy to, like, walk them through exactly how it's going to do it. And, like, be like, okay, you have to introduce your character. Give me a little bit about them kind of thing. And, like, invited them on, how, here's how you interact. Here's how you're going to roll your dice. Okay, you're going to roll your dice for this thing. Check this number, and here's how it works. And, like, walked them through it as, like, a really amazing starter DM. And, like, I would love that experience so badly. I would kill to play Chickle Sandwich with fucking Charlie Slimesicle. We wanted to invite you, but it did seem like you were busy somewhat. Yeah, it's it's okay. 
You are very much invited. Did it just make a character? That's what I do, but Stigma befriended a wyvern and killed a woman with his ass. That sounds right. That sounds correct for Stigma. Yeah, I I it's it I totally understand that you guys didn't like invite me because I do seem busy. I I am I am a busy person. But like I don't know. I could I I could make time, but I also know that like I I am like a literal be I've never played. I don't know how to play properly. I've never actually gotten to finish making a character because it never actually goes the right way kind of thing or whatever. So I I wouldn't exactly know what to do. So maybe I fucking am better to not join, but I would also be interested. It's open to everyone. We've had like two sessions and they haven't done anything. I can sit with you and make a character. Listen, maybe this is actually going to happen. Tess, I would I'd be so I would be so deeply down to do that. I I so I so very deeply would be down to play if you if you would be down to have me. I will force you to make a character. Okay, if if you're if you're willing to have me, I think this might be it might be my chance to actually try. Guys, this is it. Almost Sanders is going to finally be a D&D &D player. I'll shove one of my characters into your grubby fingers if I must. Oh my god, this would be so cool. I, I feel like Tess might actually be very excited about this and not just allowing me in. I feel like Tess might be excited about this 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 proposal. I'm excited about this. All right. Anyways, I will sit with you after fucking. After fucking? Will you sit with me during fucking? After stream character time? Okay. Okay. Can I have time to can I have time to heat up my pasta real quick? I have some leftover Olive Garden that I'd like. If I just if I just if I just heat up some after 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 stream pasta and get some more coffee, I'd be down. I need time to get less interesting. <laughs> Whatever that means, I support you entirely. Um, but yeah, I, I have no idea where exactly that's going. Check lore horrors. Oh, is is are things okay? Check lore horrors. Oh wait, lore horrors isn't my Discord. I went to open my Discord, and my Discord is not where lore horrors goes. For context, guys, we're getting on stream context. You guys do not get to know the context. But I sure do. Context understood. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways. It'll make it funnier, though. Oh, God, please, no. Yes, stress baking. Famous person might join us. I'm not famous. I'm li I'm literally not famous. But say thank thank thanks for that, man. All right. Uh God. All right. Now here's our question. Where do we where do we go round to? Hmm. Hmm 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 hmm. Oh. My sister stopped. That's where we're going. All right, boys. I know where we're going. Days is live. Yes, but I have somebody I owe a raid to quite, quite deeply. There we go. Somebody who raids me all the time, and I, I, I owe, I owe some, I owe some raid into. We're gonna load up a lay to Findo. Findo raids me pretty much every single time they're live. So I'm, I'm gonna shove you guys back in their direction. Thanks for coming and reacting with me. I actually had like a genuinely really good time. I, I I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Thanks for playing with my first reaction content. Baby's first react content. I hope it went well. Um, I'm going to go eat some pasta and apparently make a DD and d character. So wish me fucking luck because apparently it's going to be interesting. I, I guess. We'll see how this goes. Anyways. Good night, children, and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what time or what we're doing. I have no plans. I've never had a plan before in my entire life, but I'll see you then. I love you. Good night. Bye.